Okay. Yeah, I just got back from France. Um, I see. What are you thinking about this? I'll talk about France in one sec. I want to ask you, what do you think about this threads? Threads? Ooh, man. Well, I didn't like Twitter in the first place. Like, I never yeah. used it. I never really used it, so... I don't know. It's there. I guess it's a little different because it's connected to your IG. So there's like a there's like a little difference there. But so I'm with you in that. Like I never fully got into Twitter. But when I was on Twitter trying to get something going here and there, I didn't see a lot of powerlifters there because mm -hmm. I don't know. Whatever. We just are the powerlifting community is on Instagram for sure. TikTok younger crowd, but not like some of the older crowd. Like, in, and when I mean older, I literally mean like 20s um, and 30s. <laughs> like, you see some people in there, but nowhere near as active. But there is, yeah. there is for sure. Um, but threads, th threads is like Twitter for powerlifting. Like, everyone's on there, at least right yeah. now. Everybody. I'm like, because the reason why it took all of our Instagram friends and you could quick dump import it all, all your friends. Literally, it'll, you can click one button. And it'll take all your Instagram friends. And even if they're not yet on threads, when they come on, they'll automatically link you up together and you'll be following them. So it's like, so, so it was easy. easy. Yeah. It was easy. of just like transferring and start, kind of, it wasn't too bad. Like starting new for some people, you know, like some people don't want to start like something fresh on a platform. If that makes sense. So, yeah. Yeah. I, I literally just, I, I mean, in a day, it hasn't even been a day. It's been like eight hours and I have like, 5,000 followers. Yeah. What? That's like my Twitter already, like way more than Twitter. And they're actually my people. It's yeah. like you, it's like, it's like everybody I follow on Instagram. It's like actually yeah. people I want to follow, which is like, holy smokes, man. This is, um, it's easy. I think they did. Zuckerberg did a, a smart thing by doing this, by doing like, Hey, if we make it linked up with Instagram, it's just going to be an easy click over. Just everybody follows who you're already following. You don't have to do anything. Yeah, yeah, it makes me it makes me wonder about um if Instagram is gonna get a surge of uh accounts as well. Like it's gonna work both ways. I think yeah, that's a good question. Because one yeah. hand feeds the other, right? I think um it can only make the life and because the big thing is with apps is how do you make this thing carry on without dying off? You know mm -hmm. so, how apps like have like a shelf life and they die off after a while? Or we'll, like, we kind of know this kind of still somewhat new. This will help carry on that shelf life, I think. I think so. Where yeah. threads will threads because they're just beefing up Instagram essentially. There I, I was like my very first thread, I was gonna say tweet. My very first thread was, hey guys, like I don't know what the hell I'm doing, man. Yeah. I, I think you've tweeted you, you tweeted see, man. I don't even know the I, I threaded what are we, what are we saying? You we threaded? <laughs> I threaded. It's, I think My you thread. threaded. <laughs> I think you threaded. Um, like I don't know what I'm. Some little lines of I don't. I, I don't know what I'm doing here. What do we? What yeah. do we do? What do? What do you? And I essentially was like, I thought I was. So I was like, Hey guys, expect you know videos, posts, and polls and debates. <laughs> and then Pete Spence is like, Dude, they don't have polls on here yet. Like, I'm like, <laughs> I, I don't. I don't even know. I, I have no idea. I'm just saying shit at this point. But because everyone's on there, I'm re-threading people and replying and blah, blah, blah. And it's getting traction. I'm like, already it's more traction than Twitter. Yeah. I also heard they've got like 30 million people um, already in like 24 hours. Yeah. And Twitter has like 360 million. So within like two weeks, they think they could already match Twitter. Like they're pacing. Yeah. To... I wouldn't be surprised. I wouldn't be surprised, honestly. That's crazy. Yeah. Twitter, it's... Elon's like, sorry, go ahead. No, because like, there's going to be people like us. We didn't, we never touched Twitter, but we yeah. might be on that. Like, I, I, I might use it, but I was thinking, I was, I was talking to Nina. I was like, I don't, I don't know. It's just like, what do I even like write here? <laughs> like, what do I even do here? It's just a really. I was thinking it's like oh, there's like so much consumption on on that type of a like a Twitter type of thing. And the, for me, I, for me personally, I was like, oh, I got to be careful of that, you know, mm. um, because IG I didn't really use it in the first place. Like I would just kind of post and just like throw it and just like put it away. Um, 
So I was thinking, I was like, maybe I'll just use threads and I'll just post like pictures of bear. <laughs> I mean, so, so you, so you on Instagram, you post and you don't read comics, reply to comments or go to other people's too often. No, not like very, very, very rarely. Like maybe it's once a week. Healthy. Yeah. Right. It's probably very healthy. It is you, very how often, like how, how often do you post? Um, I used to, so I used to post every day. Um, mm. but now it's maybe down to like three times a week, maybe even less sometimes. Oh, wow. um, yeah. And then when, when I do, like the only time I'll, uh, the only time I really like read comments or I'll go back and reply to some people is like on my, on the meets, like, like worlds. Okay. I'll go, you know, like someone says, congrats. I'm like, thanks man. You know? Yeah. Uh, but yeah, if it's just yeah. like my lifts, I don't really even, I just kind of throw it out and put it away. Mm. Yeah. It, the, the thing like the algorithm doesn't reward that they the more you comment and reply to your own comments it'll push it up on the algorithm however mental health probably does reward that <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah there's like i find that it, it's it, it's much more peaceful you know if that's what you're looking for that is um you know right. some people that some people they need um that that's the the spike of dopamine you know really Mm. Uh, at the end of the day, that's what we, that's really what we're kind of looking for when we are consuming uh, so much uh, social media, just in general. Um, mm -hmm. And you know, by all means, there there are good things on social media, but there's like a thousand times worse things. You know, for every one th good thing, there's probably like ten thousand bad things. You know, so mm -hmm. um, yeah, I like I I I got caught up in that too. Um, I'll I'll be the first to admit. Uh, you know, a few years ago, I would I would post every, I would want to post every day. I'd read every single comment, you know, um, mm. and um, but I became very aware that that wasn't a good. I just don't think that's a good thing. Like you know, like moderation, obviously, right? Um, and like you know, there's so many things to talk about it now. Um, about just uh how easily you can get caught up in um. Basically, the quick dopamine, the five-second TikTok videos, you know, the ten-second mm. TikTok videos, the you know, you want to see who liked you, whatever, you want to see who commented, you know, um, and it, uh, for me at least, um, and I don't know how many people I could speak for, but um, I don't know. I find it more grounding to stay away from it. Uh, as much as I can. Uh, uh, once I was able to kind of separate from uh, wanting to be like, oh, I, I, I care who liked my uh, my X, Y, or Z kind of, you know, um, uh, I, I, I found myself like walking outside and be like, oh, this is nice, you know? Like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's, it's funny. I 100% know what you mean where you'll monitor how a post is doing, yeah, um, which can be like like just post and ghost is easier you will see like who liked it who didn't who's who looking at the story who's not who uh, how many shares is this getting who's commenting and it becomes like if you're posting every day yeah you get the you do get the dopamine hit of oh this is taking off oh this is yeah. whatever on the flip side you're not present in your day-to-day -day as well exactly like you can take yeah. up too much of, of your time yeah. or too much of your free time anyways um, but it, it also on another token can open up avenues for you. Exactly. So it's like, where do you draw the line for yourself? You know, mm -hmm. like if you're, if you're an online coach, um, you know, like Joey flex cannot not exactly. be on social media. Joey flex cannot, or, or Russ who man, Russ is on there one day on threads. My man is already killing it. He's yeah. like, I want everybody to show me your latest gym picture, your most recent gym picture. The guy has hundreds of people posting pictures of them themselves in the gym. And I'm like, dude, you've been on here a day. Like, well, how are you already? It's crazy, man. Yeah, he's Russ. You know, he knows what, you know, he knows that's his world. You know, that's where I think he excels in. Um, and he enjoys that. You know, I don't, uh, don't want to say he doesn't mind it. Like, you know, handling, you know, we're all human, handling comments or whatever it is, right? Uh, criticisms and stuff. But I think that's something he just uh, naturally enjoy uh, is good at, I suppose. Mm -hmm. You know, so, you know. Yeah. yeah. It is. Um, did you ever get into TikTok? 
when my Sheffield clip went viral, I had to make a oh, TikTok. Yeah. Mm. Or I think I had one, but I had to like log back into it. You know, I never really used it. I just made one like when it first came out, and I didn't really touch it. Uh, I just went on there to kind of look at the videos of my of the Sheffield uh, meme template thing. Um, and that's an interesting point too. Like, if, if, let's say I had went viral in that sense. Um, a few years ago when I was like really, really deep, you know, I was like monitoring everything about social media, I'd be going crazy. You know, I wouldn't be off my phone like all day. Um, but even when I had went viral, I was still trying to stay conscious of like, okay, that's cool. But I'm just going to like, I'll just leave it alone. Like it's whatever. Like that's, that's awesome that happened, but I'm not going to like pursue or, you know, I'm not going to like let it take over my day if essentially. Mm. Yeah. I think a huge part of being able to do that is when you've seen certain things blow up enough times and you live through a couple like instances, you also realize the next week is the same. The same it doesn't week. change yeah. your life. Yeah. Like you're right back at it. I think like maybe over time, period of time, if it, things continuously happen, doors do open. It is true though. Doors do open when you have like, you know, if you're an athlete, sponsorships, et cetera, people like yeah. to see that. Yeah, so it is, it's a necessary thing. And I was going to say necessary evil. It's not always necessarily evil because it is, yeah. you will have people who get inspired by you mm -hmm. and get exactly. inspired by yeah. your stuff. So you're like, okay, there's some positivity. I get people who randomly, uh, you already know, actually, you've been on the podcast. I've sent you like tons of messages. I didn't even send you all the messages, but I don't want to spam you. But um, people sending messages about, oh my God, the you know, the Keiko podcast or whatever. This has happened several times, but uh, you no, get feel free, those feel messages. Free send, feel free to send me those. Like, I read them all. For the one, when, yeah, it, when, okay. it's the, when it's the genuine ones, where it's like, yeah, where they're like, man, that was really something that was profound for me. Like, you know, hearing what he had to say or anything, right? Uh, those are mm. the ones I will, I don't mind to read. Like, I try and go through all my messages on IG, which is, uh, which Nina calls me crazy to do. Uh, because I have because when I stumble upon the one that's like a, um, you know, the genuinely like, hey man, I've something's been going on, and like I, you know, your videos got me back into lifting, and I've been doing better. Like that's that's fantastic. That's great. You know, that's awesome to me. Mm. So uh, that's why for me, I think I spend more time when I do spend time on social media. Uh, sorry to cut you off a little bit, but when I do no, spend no, go time. Ahead. Yeah, when I do spend time on social media, it's just kind of going, getting back to messages, getting back to my lifters, and I don't, I don't even open like my explore feed or anything. So I, don't, I, I kind of use it as like a WhatsApp, almost like just like mm. talking, you know, just like messaging uh, the people I need a message, and, and that, that's it really. Yeah, it's um, there. It's it's funny. I do have like relationships with people, like, and I mean relationships. I mean like communications, anyways. But it develops into. Like literally there'll be people who like listen to the podcast. And if you're, if they're in the message request, it gets difficult to filter through because people are trying to get repost or just whatever. It's all types of whatever. Crazy stuff going mm -hmm. on in there. Yeah. So it gets a little overwhelming, um, but there'll be some people who somewhere along the line snuck through from the message request into the general or whatever. And, um, and because, and they're talking about an episode or they're talking about something. And we start talking and then literally there'll be certain people who like message on the regular, they'll hear a podcast, come back in and they're regular listeners, the regular. And then we start talking like, Hey, how is France? And you do develop like, you know, there's some kind of relationship there. Yeah, some I've type never of met this person. Yeah. I don't know how to classify it. I don't want to say friendship, but yeah, uh, yeah. whatever, something And and I actually enjoy talking to them and I'll, I've never met them. I don't know if I'm going to meet them. But they support me. They encourage me. They tell, and then eventually they start telling me about their situation and stuff. And it's like, shit, man, it is, it is weird how these kind of things develop over time, over like years. Mm -hmm. uh, but it does happen. Yeah. And, and I think uh, the way threads kind of looks like potentially there might be more dialogue back and forth between people. Cause it's almost like just a comment section. If you picture yeah. it like that, yeah, it's like a fluid comment section. Which Twitter never was for me. Twitter felt like I was yelling in the wind. 
and nobody was paying attention because none of my friends were there. Or there was some, but oh, most people weren't. That's whereas, interesting. Yeah. Whereas threads, everyone's there. And I just commented a few when people are like already re, you know, re. Yeah, that's a good point. That's a good way to look at it. It's like, it's it's a it's for for our world and our world of like uh in our sport of powerlifting uh, i suppose it's going to be a good way like if i say hey who wants to see my bench setup or whatever right anything yeah you know, then people will, like i could there's no way i could really do that on ig besides like a story or something i suppose but then, even then that's different it's like a those would be via dms you know versus yeah, like a, it's yeah. straight dms yeah you, you could literally like threads it's literally like um you know, I'm thinking about doing a video. Do you guys want to see this video on bench setup? Or what are some ideas that you guys have for bet for that you want to see me do? Or just like, um, you know, I was just talking to six pack on the podcast. Is 93 the hottest division right now? 66 is blowing up. What do you guys think? Or yeah. like whatever. You just throw it out there. People start talking under the thread and you're just talking back and forth. And they get answer back with like um videos and pictures and like there's there's different ways of answering but like well check this youtube video and you could answer back it's it's more um dialogue and we'll see right. how it ends up hopefully it doesn't end up i i wasn't a twitter guy like you weren't either but when i hear about twitter i hear it ended up being a rather toxic place yeah that was just oh, yeah. so hopefully hopefully threads doesn't end up like that but i think it depends because seems to have taken the Instagram community and brought it over. So maybe it's a different community. It makes me wonder in that sense, because it's connected to your Instagram account, as long as you're not like, like a private, you know, you're not just like a private page or whatever. I wonder if that creates some personalness, you know, like a, a more like where you're not going to be stupid, you know, you're not going to just like, yeah, you know, yeah, that's a good point. That's a really good point. Yeah. Yeah. Because you're right. If you're on Twitter and you're just being an Instagram, like dumb, yeah, you're just being dumb. Look, you look, it. yeah, and you have burner accounts on Instagram, but I think you're right that there's more people who are at, who most people don't have burner accounts. Most mm -hmm. people actually establish accounts doing stuff on Instagram. So when your threads is linked to your Instagram, yeah, perhaps I think there's, there's more some, accountability. Some accountability, yeah, a little bit. People are gonna double back and be like, "My dude, mm -hmm. you're a father of three. What are you doing?" You know, like you're, yeah. you know, you're not going to be an idiot. Mm -hmm. I, I think that's actually a good idea. Yeah. And I do think though, for us, our experience might be different than most others because our entire community seems to be on threads. Yeah. So it's going to be like, kind of new for us. Yeah. Yeah. Man. As opposed it's to like, like uh, gamers, you know, gaming, the gaming community is all over Twitter, you know? Is that right? Uh huh. Oh yeah. Like the uh, entire esports community is on Twitter. Um, So that's kind of like. That's where a lot of the just the general sense of like oh the you know this community is kind of toxic. It's just all of like Twitter uh, kind of enables enabled that. I, I feel like so I feel it's interesting to think of it that way. That powerlifting this will be our first Twitter, which is kind of crazy to think about, right? It's 2023. We've had social media for so long, mm. but this might be the first. This is like the first step of you know again in our sport of powerlifting where the majority of us can just like thread something I, <laughs> I guarantee you, you know? it's uh, i guarantee you most people hopped on twitter and i mean like i'm approaching 300 i'm like 299,000 on instagram i hop on twitter i'm talking to myself like not literally but like yeah but damn there's nothing near, damn yeah. near. you're right whereas i go on threads and it's immediate and i think it really will be it's community. It, it depends on the communities. I think for some people they go on threads and, and it might not be popping like that, but for power, if you're a power lifter, hop on threads, everybody's there and all your people that follow you on Instagram will automatically follow you on threads. Cause it's all linked. It's all threaded together. If you will. Oh, I get it. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, it, I think, yeah, we're all doing like sponsorships, promoting events, promoting our next thing, promoting our social media of, following uh coaching etc so you want to do it. it it's um i wonder what's going to happen with twitter i wonder if things are going to end up like if you're a power lifter you're on threads if it's, you're yeah. whatever you're over here yeah. if you're i wonder if this shit's going to start getting weird like that because there's definitely i know a lot of people they're like oh yeah i only use twitter i don't i've never i don't have an instagram i've heard that many times you know um yeah. so we, i really wonder about that like is, is someone gonna be uh more 
like are they going to make want to make an Instagram now? You know, are they going to want to make a Threads now? Um, yeah, I think you know, so. so. I do also wonder if eventually we see like a Twitter die. That'd be, I would, you know, I wouldn't be surprised at this point because it was already kind of getting a lot of backlash recently. So that's that's probably why they uh, did Threads right now, um, because they saw they saw it getting kind of a lot of backlash on Twitter. Um, but I guess we'll see as as time passes. Within a week or two, I bet. <laughs> or a month, you know? Uh, and, and people were saying how, like, eventually TikTok will take over Instagram and whatnot. But I remember talking to Weez, young guy, into social media, and he's blowing up on TikTok, too. And he's like, Instagram is different than TikTok. It supplies different content. He's like, I don't think so. Yeah. He's I think people might transition from TikTok to Instagram or whatever. But he goes, I don't think... I don't think TikTok takes over Instagram like that yeah. generation when they age out. Yeah. I don't think he goes and and people who use Facebook as an example, he's like Facebook is just your profile and your wall type like that. That's yeah. the, the the way Facebook operates is nothing like Instagram or TikTok. I, he goes, it, you can't compare those two. I think Instagram is far too robust in terms of swipe up and it'll take you to you know your podcast your youtube or like they have reels they have now they have threads they have everything i just don't and they have the chats they have group chats you can create to keep in touch i don't think so i think it's here to stay but god knows yeah but the so this one compare you know comparing instagram to tiktok it's different but threads and twitter are pretty much identical right so it's good that one's going to be very interesting i think just right. as, as, as time as time passes so in and, and now they have um, dude, we're getting deep into technology right now. This is a I technology know. podcast right now. Okay? <laughs> but but um, now they, they're starting to develop quantum computers, which operate like at a hundred times faster than a normal computer. It's just insane mm -hmm. what the processing is able to do. And with these quantum cam computers, what can they, they can do with problem solving, et cetera, shortly in the future, what our AI is going to look like, what our virtual reality is going to look like, what our abilities medical wise is going to be and, you know, travel the whole line. It's these quantum computers are going to be a game changer. We're right there. I saw a quick video on it. Um, and this is what's going to be out in like the next five years. What, what we're living in right now, we think it's all cool. Literally in like five to 10 years is going to, it's going to be ancient. People are like, oh my God, did yeah. you shut your computer down and, reboot it to fix something like we all did that and it's going to be a joke in the future um we'll see what the hell happens when that all comes yeah. about who knows social media will literally be your your avatar in an actual world yeah, yeah i mean we're, yeah we're getting there so we're getting close man yeah. we're getting close um so how you been since coming back from worlds man how long has it it's been uh three weeks now huh i just Dude. about I know. What, what, what does it feel like for you when you come back from such a huge high? So I'm going to say the essentially the same thing happened that I uh, mentioned at Sheffield. Um, I was uh, once I got home, I I did take time to like look back at what we just did, um, as you should, and. I was just happy. Uh, you know, I was just happy with it. I was, um, you know, I did uh, for the most part what I wanted. It was probably my best performance I've ever done in terms of uh, execution um, standards. Like, my squat was deeper than my one at Sheffield. That's for sure. Um, and my bench was faster than my one at Sheffield. And my deadlift was faster than the one at Sheffield uh, with the heavier weights on both of them. So... I was just uh, I was happy I was able to give give a glimpse of what I have always known what I could do if that makes sense. The difference on this one, and this was a stacked class, um, a lot of the same names, but they were they're all killers. The difference here was it didn't come down to the last deadlift. It didn't come down to. For the first time in a long time, like we're so used to you being battle after battle after battle, mm. right down to the last deadlift. And oh my gosh, you know, 
And this is the first time in a long time. The number two guy, Gustav, was pulling to secure silver and did not threaten for gold. Nobody did. By the end of it, nobody was pulling to try to upseat you. You, They were like, you're gold. You're far and away. You're too far ahead. We're just going to battle it out for silver and bronze. Hmm. And that, can't remember the last time. Yeah, that's that, a big the, deal. Y- yeah, That's yo, a big deal for dude. the 80s. Yeah. Huge. So, yeah. And, and um, that was uh, ahead, 27 sorry. white lights, nine for nine. Yeah, yeah. And I, that, I think that's a pretty big deal. I was talking... Um, uh, just how the judging was the entire week. Um, I know coming in, they said the jury was going to be more uh, proactive. <laughs> and we definitely saw that uh, through every session, uh, throughout the throughout all the all the sessions. Um, and I, so I knew they were going to be strict. Because generally when they say the jury is going to be more active, they're going to be like strict. And with the whole Euro, Eurosport thing, and uh, especially like my session being broadcasted, I was like, "We're going to be on time. We're, they're going to be strict, like, and they're not going to take anything. They're not going to take any little thing." So I was like, "I have to, I have to be on point. I have to be the most on point I I can be." So, um, I think I I think I did that well. When you came into this, did it feel different than than previous? Like you were seeing you beforehand, you seemed a little different, but I, I, I have no idea. That could be anything. That could be, you know, you know, when you pass by someone in a hall, you're just observing them from afar. When I see people in the hotel lobby and I know the big, di- the big days are coming, whatever, mm-hmm. I scan around, I try to read things, but I could be reading too much into things. All right. What was it like for you? <sighs> I think it's something I've learned. Uh, and I, I spoke about this, but I'll speak about it now. Um, I find a lot of, I suppose, like strength. I just find a lot of um, joy in knowing that I am around people, good people who are here for the same reason. Uh, and, you know, like maybe it could be so, like maybe I was playing soccer and I go to a soccer stadium. We're all here. You know, all these people are here for what, what this game or you know, we're at Worlds and everyone here, uh, there's 400 lifters and their families all here to lift. Um, so as the sport gets bigger, and, you know, this being the biggest world so far, uh, I know I found myself just enjoying being surrounded by that community, right? The community of mm. uh, powerlifting. And not just the community, but like the top end of, of uh, the respective nations uh, coming in, you know? Um, so for me, I try and stay, you know, I, I, you know, you hear me use the word a lot. I try and stay conscious and aware, um, especially throughout the week. It's very, you know, like I said, it's very easy to fall into things, but, um, I feel like I was just in good spirits. Like you never know what's going to happen when the day comes. All you can do is, uh, go in and do, do your thing. Um, so I just found myself really enjoying being in the presence of, uh, uh, lifters I knew. Uh, you know, from the past and, and getting to know and meeting new people, especially, like I said, especially since it's, uh, we had a, a few new, a few more nations uh, get back in and just, uh, I was just shaking hands, taking pictures throughout the whole week. And um, a bit of that's probably the Sheffield thing, <laughs> you know, but um, for sure, <laughs> but it, it, it was good to me. You know, um, I always try and, you know, if I have time, I try and, I try and uh, sit down and, chat with them and get to know them a little and um for me that's probably the best the best part of worlds and it makes me uh again i think i find some um i don't know like strength in it uh, for myself like i uh because you know i know i might never meet this person again i might never see them that's what i always is what i always uh again stay uh, aware of um so I, i try and give them my full attention when i do when i do talk to them it's um, you know, when you say that, it is true because I see people from year after year. You know, I as a commentator, I don't gotta like qualify through nationals, etc. Right. So I'm there. Yeah. So I'm gonna You're be just there. there. Yeah. Right. I'm I'm there. I'm like the watcher. Um. So if I'm using a comic book reference, I'm seeing it all, every session, every lifter, 
constantly every year as it turns over. But I don't take for granted, it's never going to be the same crew exactly year to year. And you do have certain faces that you're used to seeing. Yeah. And to your point, there are times when I look around. For instance, like Jurens isn't new, but Jurens in the 83s, this was, you know, last year and this year is when he's contending for the title and eyes are on him like that. And, um, you know, there are certain people who are more recent in terms of worlds. And there are other people I remember who like just aren't around anymore. And you can't take for granted when you meet someone, you hang out all week and you start spending time with them. I'll see you again next year. You don't know that. You don't know that. And no. yeah. And it's, it's, it's when I was talking to Rory, I was in France doubling back. Sorry. You asked me about France yeah. at the very beginning. Then we got sidetracked right. on social media, but um, I was talking to Rory and we were at the silent meek worker meet that you're talking about. And me and Rory did the commentating and I was like, as it's coming to a close and all of these people that I met in France, you know, a lot of them aren't going to Worlds. We know the people who go to Worlds. Leah Bavwa, Pena, you know, TurboTiff, et cetera. But there's so many people in France that I met in The Last Silent Worker that will travel to Sheffield or, or Worlds here and there. I just meet them here and there. And then I meet them again at this Silent Worker and I talk to them in DMs. And like, they are such good people. And I see these people at Silent Worker and we're hanging out every day, every night. I don't want to go to sleep. I'm going to sleep like 2 o'clock in the morning because I don't want to stop hanging out with these people. And then I'll go to my hotel, wake up, and I'm right back at the venue when I get yeah. And then as it's come to a close, I'm, I'm a, me and Rory go for a walk. And I'm like, man, it's tough, man. I often go back to my normal life and I look back. I'm like, and I miss these people. I miss the moment. And it's tough, man, because I'm going to miss everybody. And he's like, however... The finiteness of it, the finality of it, the whole having to say goodbye is what makes it special. That's what makes it special. Because if you were here every single day around the same people all the time, it wouldn't be special. It would be just your day-to-day. And now you're starting to nitpick like you do in your normal day-to-day. Now you're like, oh, fuck, again with the song overhead. No, yeah. God, are you kidding me? This guy's always late in line or all of a sudden you're doing that. But when it's special, when it's special, you're just appreciating. And so he's like, it yeah. has to be that way. It has, it has to be to that be. way. Yeah. You have to get your heart broke. Life, you have to get your yeah. heart broke. Yeah. And it it's tough, man. Yeah. It's tough. And to your point about, so when you're there at Worlds whatnot, yeah, I often do look around and appreciate people. And I don't, you don't know if you're going to see him again. You're just like appreciating the moment because you right. don't know there, there is a finite at the end of this week. When we all say goodbye, that might be goodbye. Yeah, it really, it really could be. Cause I don't know, like for me, I don't know, like something could happen, something could happen to me tomorrow, you know, um, you know, who knows? Like you just end up not being able to lift or whatever it is. Right. So I think, uh, back to your, how I was feeling, uh, I think the biggest thing for me is I've found I've always appreciated life and I've always understood death, uh, like I mentioned. Uh, but I, um, I feel like I've, uh, I think it just came with experience and age. Uh, I, I found a very good mentality for myself of just uh, what I I don't need to be overly hyped. I don't you know I don't need this or that. I'm just there. I literally am just, mm. I just, I'm just there. And that's enough. That's like literally enough for me. So. Well, I mean, it's, it's like, it was your most dominating performance at the world level under this year was probably the toughest year I've ever seen the judging. Yeah. And not 100%. just the judging, but the jury for sure. Yeah. And you went nine for nine, 27 white lights. And in a class that everyone thought would be the most competitive or at least got to be up there. That's why you were chosen for the Eurosport is because, yeah. oh my God, the 93s, the 93s yeah. is always were down to the very last deadlift, et cetera. Ended up being, you know, you you just put on a dominating performance. Um, so it obviously works. Just the tranquil, the day of, do you start, like when you're in the warm-up room, does it start getting a little more ratcheted up at that point? Or even then, did you feel calm? 
uh, and for me, uh, so to your question, even I do feel calm, even during the warm ups, uh, I weigh in, you know, I'm, all, I'm doing everything. And I found myself, uh, sometimes I'm not even listening to my, to my music anymore. Like I'm just kind of talking to Nina and just, or, you know, I'm just kind of talking to someone or I'll put my music on if I just want to like, uh, kind of focus obviously, but I'm not, um, I'll get into this in a little bit, but, um, uh, I made the mistake for me, at least in past meets where I would get like, I try to turn a switch on, right. You know, you turn that kill switch on and, um, mm -hmm. uh, that's just something I've like kind of had always when I would do sports. Um, like I mentioned, you, you know, I used to get into a lot of trouble, basically in the fights. And I had this, like, you know, you see red, you see, you know, you know, you start pumping your adrenaline, you start getting, uh, just ready to do something very seriously. Mm. Right. Um, but I, for me, at least, you know, I'm always going to speak for myself here. Um, I've learned to just, I suppose I always have it on in a way, but I'm just calm now, you know, cause before I would get like, I, I would get all amped up, you know, I could like, you know, don't, don't touch me, bro. You know what I mean? Stuff like that, you know? Yeah. Um, but now it's just, I think, uh, again, like, I think it, go, it stems back to just appreciating, uh, <laughs> literally just being alive, you know? Like, I think that's one of the biggest things I've learned is just appreciating that I am currently uh, here and aware of that, in a sense, you know? Um, because I've had so many, I've lost so many friends, uh, like, I've, you know, we talked about in the past podcast. Um, if you, and if you guys haven't listened to that, uh, I, you know, I don't want to go too deep into it, but I, so I highly recommend uh, listening to our previous podcast uh, together on King of the Lifts. But um, no, I stay, I try and stay very calm, uh, no matter what, no matter what. Um, so, uh, like you mentioned, uh, you said, I, you know, how I yawned after my second bench. A lot of people made a huge deal about that. They're like, oh, it's so easy for him, right? Um, the actual reason why I was yawning. Is because um, the warm ups are extremely fast. Uh, do you want me to start? Like, is it cool if I get into this? We can go get into in. the day? Let's go. Yeah, yeah, let's go into the day. So, the day was fast. Uh, warm ups were fast. We're on your sports schedule. Everything's to the second. But everything's down to the second. You got to be on schedule, right? Um, there were points where I was doing my warm ups while chewing some food still, for example. Like, I was, they were just like, you need to go. You need to go. Um, so by the time I did my first squat uh, on the platform, I was like, how am I going to finish this meet? Like, this is going so fast. I could, you know, I already knew I could already feel the pace of it. Um, really? Yeah. Uh, that was one of the first things I thought. I was like, God, this is so fast. I know I'm going to have to go, like, right after this first squat, I know I'm going to have to go soon again. And so by the time I finished my third squat, again, I was, like, trying to, you know, I stayed calm. Uh, you know, I was like hyperventilating and I was sweating. We, everyone was like dripping sweat because it was so warm in the in the uh, in the warm up room. So um, I consciously slowed my heartbeat down for my first and second bench to like almost take it as a breather. I took my first and second bench as kind of like a break. Uh, so that's why, like, after that second bench, I was just like yawning. Because I like literally wow. my yeah literally my heart I kept my heart rate down so I wouldn't get too like I wouldn't get adrenaline dumped getting into my getting into my deads. So how did you how did you first off that's a veteran move to recognize yeah. this is a fast pace and if I don't pace yeah. myself I'm going to die out. I was like there's, there's no I've way. A, yeah. I've okay. had a couple people who have confided that by their last deadlift they were like I'm gassed and I, I already knew yeah. I wasn't going to hit it. They yeah. already knew. They walked out there like, I'm going to walk the walk. I'm going to tug on it. I'm going to give it a go. But they were already like, I didn't think I was going to get it. Yeah. Um, so and it comes it comes down to a lot of uh, breath work and just kind of being, it's something I practice too when I need it. Anyways, um, I do a lot of, uh, I'm sure <laughs> I'm sure if you think about it, like if you, by the way I am, uh, you, you, I do a lot of meditation. I do a lot of breath work. Um uh, I'm almost like a hippie nowadays. I feel like is what I kind of joke with Nina. <laughs> you know, I'm like I'm like not being on social media as much and stuff. But um, um, yeah. After my third squat, I felt my heart rate like still kind of going, and I felt like uh, my breathing was staggered. It was going fast, and I was like, if I let this, if I keep this into bench, 
by the time I get to death, I'm going to be, I'm going to be smoked. Like I'll be like, okay, but I'm not going to be fresh, you know? Mm. So I was like, well, I know these benches are going to be chill. Like my first one, my first bench at least. So I have to like save my energy. I literally was like, I only have so much to expend today. There's it's hot back here. It's going to be fast no matter what, because we're on a schedule. So I have to work with the schedule and adjust how, like how I'm, how I'm like existing right now. <laughs> so, you know, I did a little breath work um, and I was just, I kind of, st- I even turned off some of my music. Uh, I, I changed it to a little more relaxed music in that sense to, for my first and second bench. And then, um, so I took those as just chill warm up. Uh, I think my second bench was like 523 or something. Um, 524 and a half. Here, yeah. Sick here. Um, so yeah, so you finish off with a 300 even squat second bench 237.5. What is that? Cause you ended up your, you, you get a world. That's something like, yeah, it's something like that. I think it's two, okay. 225 or something or 525 rather. Um, so I went out to that and I was like, I'm still going to relax. Um, and then I can I can go all out for third bench and then and, and then finish it off and just like use everything else for the first second and third dead, so. And when you, when you're in the midst of all this, staying calm, cool, collected, are you paying attention at all to the other lifters, or do you know what's going no, on? No, there's no time. Like that's that's the job of my um, the, that's the job of my handlers and my you know the people around me. Mm. Uh, my only job is to is to perform that day, so. Yeah. Yeah. Which makes it a hundred times easier. I mean, looking at it at this point, up to your second bench, mm-hmm. Gustav Hedlund, Emil Krastev, um, they all went five for t- five for five. Gustav missed his third bench, uh, but Krastev went six for six. Uh obviously Gavin fell a little bit behind. It's it's the squad. He can't get that third squad in for the life of him. And he's got to get that. He's got to go deeper, right? So when that didn't happen, I know you're not paying attention, but kind of really Im- it, it impacted his potential to catch up. It'd be very difficult for him. Not mm-hmm. off uh, because obviously Sheffield was close, but the way you were pacing, it looked like Gustav and Emil. Sasha um, started making kind of a bit of a late surge there. His opening squat was the craziest grinder. Yeah, and he had I like a my... little turbo lag on him, I feel like. It yeah. was like, Sasha, you're in trouble, my friend. This is, yeah. you grinded your opener, and this is a very fast pace. So I, I couldn't believe he found another gear and ended up just like, he never missed a lift. And I'm yeah. like, how did this guy grind his first squat? And I'm like, you're, I'm going to see you in like two minutes, dude. You have no time to recover from the grinder you just had. And he kept coming out and hitting and getting yeah. better. That guy's um, That guy's crazy. I love him. He's... He's like just pure energy. <laughs> it's cool. <laughs> pure energy. Yeah. And sometimes he hits, sometimes he doesn't. Uh, last world had a rough day. This world, he had a phenomenal day. He ends up going yeah. nine for nine um, and finishing off with a huge 365 kilo deadlift, by the way. Golden. Yeah, deadlift. that was absolutely and insane. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah, yeah. crazy. Um, and going into, so going into deadlifts, you take the bench press world record despite this crazy turnaround. And when you're going into deadlifts, even then, you probably don't know what's going on with everyone else, right? Mm-mm. No. Okay. And at the point when, obviously, so you take 320, 337.5, and then you take 345. At the point that you took your second deadlift, already people are per- like people are starting to fall too far behind to really catch you already then. And your momentum has been... I mean, you're building quite the total. Do you are you recognizing the total you're building? Are you look at your at your numbers, if not at anyone else's? Mm-mm. I, I like I don't. I really don't know uh, until even after my third deadlift. I don't know what I've total. I usually have to ask like what I total. You know. Um, oh wow. Yeah. Um, and um, you know, after my third deadlift, uh, I went to the back, um, and I I talked to Will, the guy, one of the guys who was handling me. Um, and I was like, okay, what now? Like, who's, uh, I, I literally said, who's going to pull like, what, like, you know, who's going to pull, I don't know what's happening. I'm like, okay, like uh, I'm going to have to go to the, the way it always is for you. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, like, yeah. Who's pulling for my medal? Yeah. You know, so, <laughs> yeah. 
that was just kind of like a you know i just kind of expected it in that sense and i was just like okay uh i did my third deadlift let me get to the back let's not you know that's good i did what i could now i just have to watch right you know that's, that was my initial thing usually yeah and will uh was like no it's done i was like what, what do you mean <laughs> i was like what do you mean it's done that i lose <laughs> i was like is someone going already yeah yeah you're right? like what do you mean <laughs> <laughs> i was like or you know um he was like no you you like no one's pulling to the to to push you off and i was like i don't believe you i was like i was like i don't believe you let me like show me the board you know <laughs> i'm like so i went over and he was like see like it's done and i was like like actually done <laughs> like, i was like yeah, actually like, done dude this you like, this is never the case for me <laughs> it's never the case that i don't think i've had that since like 2019 really um oh my gosh like where a second deadlift just kind of puts me you know puts me in a good spot um so after that i was like i just you know again i just started i just kind of broke down again uh because it's just how i am with these things um um but it wasn't too bad you know like it was just a lot uh it, it was more it, i think it was one of the first times that i think about it uh, looking back where when i got emotional uh, after winning it was for myself it's always i've always had someone someone else in mind or you know like oh mm. i you know i've done i'm you know I, i'm thinking about this person that person my friend this my family member um and not that i wasn't thinking of them you know obviously but um uh after i've like you know after it's set in that it's done you won uh, i think this is the first time i really got emotional for myself and i can't i actually can't remember the last time it was, it, i've had that um and I, again it was only for like a minute I only I, it wasn't like the other ones where i'm like bawling it was just like i just shed a single tear for myself kind of <laughs> yeah. um but it, it was just uh to come back and get that redemption after how last year's uh, went down um, was it, it was something I had been waiting for for obviously a whole year, you know. So it was it was interesting. It was really <laughs> it was interesting, and it was very um, rewarding, you know. It was. Um, It felt good. That's I guess that's the best way I could put it. It was it was just having that redemption was was something I've been uh, I was working for for the past year. Did it did it like did last year light a fire on you and and gnaw at you? Like obviously you've dealt with a lot of other things um, that really put life into perspective. But from a sporting aspect, because you had been you know we did a podcast talking about eras. And we're like, look at there, there's a Keiko era. Um, and then for sure, now you win another title. Like a lot of greats in other sports lose their title, and you really show something when you could lose a title, rally back, win the title, and improve. And to do that in sports is very difficult. You know, what's even like team sports like basketball, whatever. If you have a string, lose one season, now you got chin checked. And, yeah. you know, whether it's Jordan or whoever, have to take a seat back and be like, how did we lose? Come back again and regain dominance, re, you know, re, regain balance and be like this, we're going to write the ships. Um, was it like gnawing at you? Was it, what was it over the course of that year? And then obviously having reclaimed the throne, be like, I'm back on top. There's satisfaction, obviously, but. I knew. I remember in South Africa, I didn't sleep that night, and I went down. Uh, and I was waiting for breakfast to open. Uh, I don't know if you remember, we had breakfast. You, we yes, taught each we other had breakfast. breakfast together. Yeah, it was you, me, and Delaney. Um, That's right. And I remember reflecting at what happened and trying to figure out how how that happened. How did the wrong number get put in? When obviously this is the number that should be in, you know. Um, cause I watched, I went back and watched everyone's lifts. I went, you know, I went back and watched everything I watched, you know, and I was just like, how did this mistake happen? Right. And uh, for me, I'm again, for myself, I'm always very punctual, you know, like 
Uh, I guess that's how I was raised. Uh, I, I I get that more so from my, my my dad. He's like, no mistakes, no mistakes, or you, like you're dead, you know. Um, and speaking of which, uh, let me jump a little bit. That I've never seen my dad. I've never felt that disappointment from my dad before. Really? After, yeah, I'd never felt that that much from him before. And I didn't tell. I I never explained to them how it went down. Um, but yeah, is that why? And, and you're talking about like like after 2022 in South Africa. Mm, after 2022, yeah. Is that why? Because you are so. I know you don't like the term Mister Perfect, but no, 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 I, no. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> but but <laughs> your 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 reason why is is a good reason. But um. Is that why you are so like accurate surgical on that platform? Like you under the most harshest scrutiny will get 27 white lights. Like, has that come down from your father in terms of punctuality? You've got a job to do. You don't make mistakes. You don't make these, these errors. And when something like that happened, trying to explain to your father, he's just like, he's not going to understand. He'll be like, how though? And yeah. it, it, this is part of the. It, it, yeah, hundred hundred percent, hundred percent. Um, I thought about it. Uh, I didn't. I didn't. You know, I didn't realize that until I, because I don't think about these things until I kind of chat with again. I chat with Nina about it. She's the one who keeps me very. Uh, um, because it's good because she's she comes she's you know she's a different family. She's a, a, a you know outsider in kind of you know. And mm. she gets to talk to me about these things, and she's like, "Oh, you know, you're so you're like this because of so and so. You're like this because of so and so. You know, um, like my mom's side. She's there. My mom and her entire side. They're extremely competitive. They're so they're so, <laughs> they're like so competitive about everything. Even like all my cousins, they all play sports. They all you know, and they're all like good at sports. They're all super competitive. You know, so um, I get the competitive side from my mom." And I get the very accurate, no mistake side from my dad. I would mm. say, yeah. And that it's crazy how that literally has impacted how you perform because everybody, your track record is insane yeah. in terms of, and I mean, like, it's easy to do local meets and blow them up and go nine for nine. Of course, nobody's chasing you. No one's pushing you. Attempt selection is what? It's just what you feel like. You're not being forced to make tough decisions and, and push yourself to the brink to make the, make the biggest total possible. Um, to do what you do at the highest level against the competition you have in continuously, only when the, the last deadlift was flubbed and not changed when it was supposed to be changed. That's the only reason why you missed one. It's crazy your stats. Yeah, You know, it's it's... It's remarkable. I don't know. I can't think of anyone else who's done this kind of run like you. Yeah. In, I, in... I try not Sorry, to like ahead. toot my own horn about it, but I like the, when other people do performances, a lot of the times they don't, they're not really tested. And in that sense, they don't have to like go against someone who's on their ass. You know, mm -hmm. that's really, a, you know, um, or five um, people on your ass. Man. Exactly. You, have, like, you, <laughs> you know, know, I have a whole like roster on me, you know? Yeah. Um, so, I, I hope that gets taken into consideration sometimes when people like kind of talk about uh, performances and like, well, why why didn't he add an extra two and a half here? It looked, you know, so easy. I'm like, well, you have to consider the day, you know, like it's not like you could say that about anything like boxing. Um, you know, they say, you know, the hardest puncher doesn't win on the day. The best boxer wins on the day, you mm -hmm. know, um, and it's like, oh, you have a great you know you have a great uh left hook man like just land your left hook or you know like just throw it a little harder it's like that's not how it works you know maybe this guy's not that's not working yeah you know so when someone's punching back and you have five guys punching back yeah, on you exactly you know I, and I, I think that's a big thing again when it comes to performances a lot of guys they don't have people punching back you know they can just go in and then they could just show you their their bag work they're just they're just showing they're just hitting a punching bag you know right yeah. yeah, that's a good so. analogy is like, that's 100% the difference is you will look like Muhammad Ali hitting a bag, but when you hop in there and you have opponents hitting back like you do, and you were always, and it's the IPF worlds too, the judging is, it's crazy. 
Yeah. Um, you, you know, look what happened to Delaney, Taylor. Some of the lifts, I thought, like, why is this getting overturned? Right. And for you to, like, thrive under these, it's actually, like, you are so pinpoint. And it's so, um, you know, it's almost like your your dad appreciates that from you. Like, in terms of performance-wise, because you're all strong. And mm-hmm. he knows you're strong. But it sounds like what your father really appreciates from you. And and to be honest, I, I think a lot of us appreciate it too. I think more people who are aware of the world level will appreciate more from you though. And I've been to like, like almost a decade of doing these worlds. But for you to be this ac- accurate, this technical, and to never drop the ball time and time again under such pressure cooker situations and be that thorough with your craft. I mean, it's, it's remarkable. You're, yep. you are, you know, it's remarkable. And for your father who, who may or may not be in into strength sports, I could see where he would be like, you know, when he hears about nine for nine, 27 white lights and the perfection of it all. And like, he sees, if he sees highlights and this guy missed that guy missed, but you're bang, 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 right through to the end. And like, I could see where he'd be like, that was a masterpiece. There it is right there. And then for a guy who appreciates that kind of thing, you know, like I, a lot of us do, I think the hardcores of us do. And then that's where it'd be very difficult. South Africa would be difficult. And then because they, because they run the, they're running the numbers too. They know what I, you know, are your parents? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, wow, dude. Yeah. Whoa. Like they, they write it on a, like they always show me, they have like a paper, like it's, it's, it, it just looks like, um, like lifting cast. You know? What? Yeah, and they write it all down. And it's all there. Like they have everything. And they have like notes and stuff. Holy Yeah. Oh, so so your dad for real will analyze your performance and be mm-hmm. like, All right, well, this is where I had you. Why did that number go in? And stuff yeah. like that. He's actually all in. Yeah. Him and my fascinating. mom. Yeah. Really? Yeah. That is fascinating. Um, so do they know all about your opponents and everything as well? When you I guess it's it's a familiar faces so yes. they probably recognize <laughs> yes they know <laughs> yeah they, they no they're kidding. yeah so but you know so don't that, get me wrong my dad's he has a you know he's a good he's a good person and he has a he has a big heart so he's just a uh, he know he knows i can he he just knows i can do i can do well is all yeah well he he knows you have malta in you your performance of malta yeah exactly he knows you have that in you so then when he saw South Africa, he would be like, what the heck? That wasn't. I, You got me thinking. Uh, it was after 2018 Arnold. Uh, Nina sent me alone to go to the Arnold. <laughs> that was the last meet I went alone, by the way. <laughs> uh, wow. <laughs> I think I went um, six for nine. Oh, shit. is that weird? Is that even weird to like say right now? That is uh, crazy for me to hear that from you. I but think that was I went six Jonathan for nine. Keiko. Yeah, I think I went six for nine. Uh, ever since then, I'll. Uh, you can even ask Joey. It was like ever since that meet, we. There was like no way that's happening again. Um, but um, I remember my dad picked me up from the San Francisco airport. Uh, it was him and Nina. They picked me up, and I remember my dad talking to me just on that drive home because I was like, it's like a four-hour drive. And he was just explaining how uh, he's like, oh, you know, it's sports. You know, sometimes it happens. But we basically went into basically don't let that ever happen again. <laughs> really? Wow. <laughs> yeah. Wow. And it was just the missing of the miscalculation. For um, 2022 or 2018. For 2018. Like, like when, when he when he picked you up. He hmm. just did 2018. Like, well, that's for 2018 Arnold. So that one was like, that one was, I, I honestly was spotting high. It was close, but it was high. Uh, mm. I think I missed the bench because my butt came up. Um, well, so. the technical proficiencies of it, he didn't like either, which I yeah. can understand too, where he'd be like, this is your chosen sport and you're technically not meeting the standard, which is crazy because you know what? Yeah, Jonathan, your dad, he made a monster out of you because you go to IPF worlds under the craziest standards and you're not missing nothing. People are getting squats overturned and you're like flying through it. And um, it's interesting where people see the end product, but don't know how you get there. And it's like, well, because there's a standard 
you know, you missed even a few lifts at the Arnold Classic before you were the Jonathan Keiko that we know now. And your father's like, you're squatting high, though. Yeah. Well, I mean, you're giving away lifts. Why would you give away lifts? Or like your butt came up. Why would you give away your lifts? Like, that doesn't make sense. Yeah. You know, make, help me make sense of this, Jonathan. And they'd be like, you're right. That can't happen again. Yeah. You know, you get a, you get a glimpse of it. Like even my mom, uh, after Sheffield, actually, you know, jumping back back to kind of present time, um, uh, and one of my preps, uh, during my prep from Sheffield to Worlds, it was like eight weeks for me, um, even my mom was like, hey, you're squatting high. Like, really? she was just like, hey, she's like, hey, those are high, like straight up. Like, <laughs> Whoa! <Yeah. laughs> so they know, they really, this is fascinating, so they yeah. really are, they know depth, they know proper yeah. depth. yeah. That, they're they're on me. Yeah. That's yeah. why you're never going out of like standard. They'll they'll call you to it's your parents. You know what? Like sometimes you see people post somewhat debatable squat depth. I repost and like on their page, nobody's saying anything. Mm -hmm. Their coaches aren't saying much, their friends aren't saying much. You're like, wow, you're destroying that squat. Yeah. I repost that squat on King of Lists, and it's the community, not their team and the community is like man those are high and they're right. you get the red light emojis or whatever and they're getting like like reality check but your inner circle is not afraid to reality check you real quick and be no. like hey man no 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 <laughs> there is no sugar coating in my uh uh from where i'm like kind of my like my family and the circle i grew up in like no i don't think mm -hmm. we have anyone's ever sugar coated anything even even when I started getting like more popular and you know, they they, they got even harder on me. I, I think <laughs> so. so the standards, mm. I guess, like uh, you're representing USA at the right. worlds. Right. The standard they must take it super seriously. Extreme, um, like extremely. It's like pretty much. Uh, I guess again, the way I grew up, it's just like, you know, you're given an order, and it has to be done. You know, it's just like how well of us, you know. I'm trying to say this in a so people don't take it in a strange way or a uh, don't take it wrong. I guess if you if you know what I'm saying, but like you're a soldier, you're given an order, and it's your job to carry that out. Mm. Um, yeah, you got you got your marching orders. Yeah. And 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 uh, yeah, I mean it's a dude. First off, when you come on, it is fascinating. You you go deep. And people learn, I learn about you more and more every time. And it actually like, it helps people understand people have like fascinating backgrounds and yeah. you wonder when people see like finished products, you wonder how somebody can do this. How does, how does someone do that? How does someone pull this off? And then when you come on and be like, no, like, like, like you're, you're operating under the craziest of standards under pressure cooker situations where it's dog fights all the time and you never drop the ball and it's all the time you're so reliable on this and it's like how is this and it makes more sense now it's like no i was born and raised like this oh yeah that was like since i was a kid it's been like you know that's just like how it is you know you give you know your test your test to do something and you get it done or else you wouldn't have been tested to do it <laughs> yeah yeah there's a standard here and now everybody's watching and your last name, Keiko, is literally in databases and talked about all over the place. That's your that's your father's last name. He's yeah. gonna be like my friend. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Yeah. Be like, this is the family name you're representing as well as USA. Um, I can see how is it satisfying, you know, having the nine for nine days, etc., when you're all said and done. Like, is this now instilled in you? When you look back and you're like, that's a satisfying when you see other people missing lifts and earlier in the week, like overturns and people talking about calls and this, is it a satisfying thing or is it a relief or would, is it on your mind? Like, okay, this is, this is how I handle my business. I knew, like I said, I knew the judging would be really hard. So I was like, I'm fairly certain my standards will hold up though. Uh, I just have to be very, 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 like I can't skimp anything. Mm. Like you know when you get when you start getting heavy on squats or you start getting heavy on the bench, you don't want to you know like I don't want to pause as long or I don't want, you know. Yeah. Um, there's those little things. I was like, it doesn't matter about like you just I just have to keep the standards from first the first second third all the same. 
there can be any deviations, you know. So, and coming into this prep, like f- first off, do you listen to their previous show podcasts or anything like that, or is your social media shut down also leading into the prep where you you try not to listen to too much of that kind of stuff? I, well? I listen, to, yeah, I listen to nothing. I almost go like off. Almost, I, I'm basically off the grid. I'd say when I do start like getting really close to prep. Like I'll, I'll throw in, I'll, I'll post something again. I, I just kind of put it away. Um, so yeah, I'm pretty, I'm pretty uh, in the dark about everything. Do you listen to recap shows and stuff like that afterwards? Or do you try to sometimes, 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 sometimes. Yeah. How was, how did you find all of the media at this world? Cause that's another, okay. First off. Yeah. The crowd was way bigger. The crowd was way more boisterous. The yeah. crowd booed calls chanted. It was crazy. This yeah. crowd was like a whole nother deal. Um, but the media obligations, and I say obligations, but you guys did a lot more media before, after, from Powerlifting America to SBD to the IPF to whatever. How did you find all that? Uh, I think it was it was really good. It was something I feel like we've always wanted. Um, I did, uh, uh, We ran out of time, so I didn't get to do the IPF uh, post to me interview. I think you were doing that, right? Yeah, yeah, no worries. But yeah, yeah. I was yeah, I was like, dang it, like, because uh, I had to do the Powerlifting America uh, post conference interview, um, and then I had to get drug tested, uh, and by the time it, that was done, it was like almost it was like almost one a.m. So um, crazy. Yeah, because our man, my our session, what we started at eight p.m. Right, ours was a little uh, a little later. Yeah, yeah, but so, it gets crazy, man. Yeah, so it's yeah, it was long, but the the media. It was nice. I think it's a great, it's a big, good step in the right direction. Um, you know, you know, White Lights Media was killing it, like oh, with yeah. all the battles. Oh my god, they, um, those videos are so those, good. Yeah, you know, the battle of the ninety threes. I was so sad that the only the the one video that popped off is the one time I lost for like, <laughs> well, you know that uh, when, yeah. when that because that video popped off. It has like half a million views on YouTube. That's insane. I, yeah, yeah, and I was like, "Damn it, this is like the one time we messed up." Too. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, but um, yeah, they did a lot of great videos with like uh, Callies, like the seventy fours. Oh my god, like, like that's sports, man. Oh my, like yeah. that's like that's more exciting than a lot of sports that are being broadcasted. You know, one hundred percent. People say powerlifting's boring. You watch one of those. Well, here is another thing. Um, Eurosport did something similar a little longer. I think they went to around 45 minutes range, but the highlight of the sessions. So they did very, very similar, which is bang, 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 really? ripping through with, oh. yeah, with the commentary oh. and then put it on Eurosport and millions of people saw it. So they so, had their own um, kind of media crew that threw it together as that's well? Right. Wow. That's right. Wow. I didn't even think so about all, that. Wow. So all over Europe, which is huge for powerlifting that's a big yeah. market um i gotta tell you most of your rivals are from europe but you've been you've been around yeah. enough of europe now doing this to see it all over europe they saw those highlight packages similar to the white lights one and it's just killer and to your point where this is how a digestible method for our sport how many millions of people are going to see this and be like that looks cool man like i how do i get involved in this and that is why Malta was so much bigger and all these European nations are like, like the crowd and everything. Sheffield is in Europe, obviously we're going to see an influx of over the next few years due to Eurosport and all those highlight video shows in the live ones, like you, the, you're you with the 93s and whatnot. We're going to see an influx. The next few years, some people are just finding it now. And then in three years time, they'll be making their appearances at worlds. Yeah. And that's when we're going to see another wave, man. Yeah. We're going to see some waves. It'll yeah, it's exciting, because... you know, and I, I, I do want to see how the, I do want to see what Euros, uh, Eurovision ended up putting out, uh, you know, because it was, it was a big deal going into, into this one. So I've been really curious about, curious about that. So. Well, people, when I was in France, people were telling me about it look like on Eurosport and they said it looks fantastic. Like the high oh, really? versions were fantastic. Oh, yeah. that's good. That's good. I wonder if there's anywhere that's... we can find that, right? I know. This is why right? I was like, I'm sure you could find some links. I'm uh, watching how I say this. Well, there's like, you know, oh. you, you... <laughs> <laughs> but 
Um, I'm sure there's ways. I'm sure it's yeah. tough. I want to see it too. But what's yeah. really cool is you, your session, like a real sport, like a like a freaking baseball game on a Saturday that runs three hours long. Your session of powerlifting was on their version of ESPN all over Europe with millions of people watching and they watched you. Yeah, it was flipping cool as that. It was my session and the supers, right? It was your session and the supers. That's yeah. That's yeah. I I was trying to, I I thought about that after, (laughs) you know, and I'm just like, man, that's like, that's crazy. Like I could just be on someone's TV right now, you know? Yeah. Millions of people. There are people all over Europe from all different countries and, and they actually have, and this is really cool. Okay, so I'm on Eurosport doing the commentary in the English version. They have people doing commentary in all different languages oh. all over the place. Yes. And they would link us up with the Eurosport guy. We have a producer right there live who would link us up for like when we do the scoreboard, when we cut the commercials, when we do all these different things. And um, so this is like so many different languages. You were digested in so many different languages in so many different countries. Millions of people watching, they're sitting down. Some kid, 15 years old, is watching this with his dad. And it just comes on like, what is this? And then I'm talking. They'll hear me saying like, Jonathan Keiko, you know, he's back. He wants to take his title back. You you already seen the stream. All the things I was saying. All the different characters we have. And that's when you appreciate the different characters to make it spicy right down to the end. And some kid on an afternoon or evening is watching that with his dad and it's going to make, oh, that was cool. And the dad was like, damn, that was pretty cool. Huh? And they're, they're just watching like a sport. It's, it's crazy to think yeah. about. Yeah. Like, like a dude who's watched a baseball game with his dad or a basketball game with his dad. They watched you guys. It's, um, yeah, man, that, that was, uh, we'll see what happens coming in the future, but they do this enough times. It's, it's a like cool, but at the same time, there's going to be a wave of people. There's going yeah. to be repercussions. There's going yeah, to be some. That's good. The talent pool gets yeah. bigger. The the net got cast, right? <laughs> yeah, that's good. That's good. That's what I want. It's good. So, and you'll you'll have people coming yeah. in being like, "I remember watching you when I was a kid on TV." Yeah, and I'll be like, and like oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be like, "Oh, hey, yeah." <laughs> you're like, "Oh, you were watching about? You remember that? Okay, you remember, you remember that? That was twenty years ago." Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but some people do you, they will remember this kind of stuff I don't know it was the wildest uh, but you didn't think about that ahead of time obviously like you knew though okay, I knew about it but I'm like that's not important you know for me as an athlete right now so yeah uh, I, I knew though 100% we had to stay um, professional <laughs> you know like on the pl- right. you know, as much as we could right yeah because um, I know Big. the more the more eyes uh, are on you especially uh the suits and such right uh there's there's a there's a certain level of professionalism that needs to be upheld so yeah right like yeah. the old i think a meme account just re- i think it was squat meme dead deadlift that posted yeah. when somebody swears on the platform after something you yeah. know hitting a big lift or getting a call yeah. or whatever it's like <gasps> be careful we're live on tv sir yeah no really like <laughs> As much as that is a kind of a thing, it, it is a thing, you know, especially when you're right. live, you know, because um, you don't know, you don't know how that's going to come off for whoever, you know, even if it, it's a negative impact on one person, you don't know who that person could be, you know, that's yes. Executives are watching. Potential exactly. sponsors are watching. Exactly. Literally Eurosport executives are watching yeah. exactly. in other channels too. Like this is Eurosport now. Obviously, there's push to bring this to other markets, Asia and North America, on big channels as well. So you want this to go over very well on Eurosport. So when you bring it over to other channels and other markets and other broadcasters, it's like, look at the ratings, look what we did, etc. So yeah, you definitely don't want, um, you know, yeah, you guys turned it into a cuss-filled you Yeah, know? you know, you just don't want to end up turning into like WWE, because you know how that went down with the UFC. Um, right back on fox right what right they were live on fox and uh someone was cussing and they turned into like a you know they kind of it was the early days of UFC when it still wasn't fully accepted and people like Mm. a lot of the high ups were still seeing it as a like a street a glorified street fight you know yeah um and when it was like their first time on fox do you do you remember this 
There was, I, I mean, there was a time on Fox and there's another promotion that was on NBC mm. and um, I forget the promotion's name, but literally a guy came to the ring. You know, they do this on UFC yeah, the, guys yeah. come down to the ring and challenge to the guy who just won. A guy came down to the ring, challenged the guy who just won and a freaking brawl. brawl. Broke out. Yeah. It was crazy. This was the, a brawl. Nate Diaz and Nick Diaz were there and jumped the guy. It was mm. because they were they were with the guy who just won. They were part. They were in his corner. The Diaz brothers were in his corner. So when my man came down and challenged them, the Diaz brothers were like, "Oh, I don't think so. Yeah. This isn't your moment. Don't try to take his moment." Jumped them in the ring live on TV. It was like a Saturday afternoon. It was like yeah. four p.m. It wasn't even evening, and it was the TV producers like, "Oh, I don't know if we're ready for MMA." Yeah. This <laughs> right? Yeah, and it, it ruined that uh that opportunity. Yeah. You know? So, that promotion went under exactly because they goes lost under. the TV deal. Yeah, like obviously UFC is doing great, but you know who knows? Maybe it'd be even bigger now. You know, and then there are things like that. You know, to think about um, when it when it you know when you are live and there's a lot of eyes, not just like a hundred people on stream. You know, it's not just right. like a random stream. It's these are like actual people. You know, you know people are watching on TV. It's not they're not they're not watching on TV from a YouTube link. They're watching on TV. You know, yeah. under a uh, you know, for them, your for for your sport. So, um, yeah, they bought that streaming service. Yeah, to be entertained, they're paying for that streaming service for their sports content. Right. And um, to your point too, there's a lot of people who you don't know who's watching in terms of potential like sponsors, etc. There's a lot. There's like you got your freaking gym sharks getting involved now, and like a lot of different potential people come companies watching i don't know yeah. what the heck's going to happen in the future but yeah you don't know because like maybe you planted a seed you know someone like someone high up saw it and maybe in a year from now they're like you know what i remember seeing that i liked it you know gatorades put imagine one of these actual big sports drinks yeah are like these guys cut weight they drink gatorades they do whatever the hell they got to get their electrolytes in they got to get their carbs in they're not eating a lot back there we could sponsor some of these guys yeah. You know, we could, what, what if we hop in there? That was cool. That was, let's hop in at this level before it gets big. Cause they got a feeling it's going to get big. Um, this is how, this is how things happen. You just keep putting more and more exposure. Oh, I want to ask you also about world games was announced. All right. That's exciting. now. Yeah. With athlete compounds and the whole freaking nine. You with all you talking about exposure, my friend for yeah. you, if you're doing everything you're doing and you've been doing this for a while, You've been number one for quite some long before you won a world title. You were already the number one ninety three. There was a COVID year. You were already established as number one ninety three. And I believe even two thousand nineteen. Do you know when you were already ranked the number one ninety three in the world? I think twenty nineteen. It was. I want to say I was, but I, 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 I can't want to say so that. too. Yeah, I want to say so too. Uh, I think there was the world championships in June, and then. That September fall was USAPL um, nationals, yeah. and I, I think, think David Wilson did that meet right. Twenty nineteen, he did. He, he did. Yeah, yeah. And LS one question mark? I don't uh, remember. Oh no, no way, no way, no. Wilson came in second. I think it might have been Anatoly. Let me double check this. It probably was Anatoly because I think that was his last ninety three meet. But I think he did. Um, 860. I want to say he did 868 or something. If I had to guess. I'm gonna let's let's take a little trip down memory lane, sir, because now I'm very uh interested and we're gonna have some powerlifting nerds listening to this. And they're like, you you don't know that? Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Okay, it was Anatoly. He did 852.5. Okay. And he beat Gustav. Wilson came in bronze. Sorry. So you so he did 852.5. And you at U.S. Nationals did uh, eight sixty eight point five. Okay. So okay. yeah, you and, and like respecting Anatoly, he won the world title. I take nothing from him. I'm just saying, um, you were ranked number one, and mm. um, from that point, and a lot of people are like, oh my god, let's see what happens with Kaiko when he goes to Worlds. So you you miss COVID, but you were and and Anatoly moved up. So you were the number one ranked from 2020 to 2022, and then back on again shortly after that with Sheffield, and then boom to this world's. You got a you got a hell of a run. So it's where, been a good four you, years, huh? 
it's a like, good spread around there. Yeah, a good spread. Yeah, it's a good spread. We're getting close, man, because yeah. it was it was in the fall, and you're already number one ranked. So yeah, yeah it's a hell of a spread for you. Uh, this is an era when we had the eras debate. Who has an era? Who doesn't have an era? You have an era. This is a Keiko era in my mind's eye. You've had enough battles, um, and and you've established yourself. When you look back and you see yourself right now, well, first off, a what was your standout moment to you from your era? Hmm. I want to say when I did the meet in Anaheim 2019, right before Raw Nationals, because I remember you made the post where I, because that meet, I unofficially, unofficially broke the world record total. Um, and I think that was the start of it of like, Hey, this guy has like, this guy put up a big total that actually, you know, and, and this matters. And, you know, now let's keep it, you know, now we let's, this is someone to keep an eye on. Um, mm. I think that was one of the big meets um, that was a standout. I, well, I guess that was like a start of it, but standout moment. I think this, I think this past worlds was the biggest one. Really? Uh, out of all of them, because because I won by my second deadlift against like the best, the like the best. Because like honestly, like if you were, if like the guys I go against, like if Gustav so happened to be like an eighty three kind of guy, you know, or like a seventy four, like the him Gustav him would be like mm. either winning or second. You know, what I mean, these are the these yeah. guys aren't pushovers. These guys are like, oh, you know, uh, yeah, they're and they want it. And they're good. They train hard. They they do what they can. You know, these are. You know, some and they don't they don't mess around. You know, so um I think winning the way I did was actually was probably a very, very um I don't wanna say defining moment, but more of a like a um a stands out, I would say, compared 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 to the other ones where you know, it was down to like the last kilo to the last deadlift to type of things. Yeah, I would say I think that's accurate. I think yeah. Because they had good days. Because the majority yeah. of everyone had good days. It's not like everyone went like six for nine, and I, you know, and then I'm just ahead by like forty kilos. 50, you know, yeah. um, a, a lot of these well, guys went. Go ahead, sorry. No, I. Oh, i actually okay. So yeah, I was gonna say yeah. <laughs> then we'll go back to your say. But uh, no, I think in terms of your pinnacle performance, if someone's gonna say what's the best possible performance performance he ever had, barn on this one. Um, and so far. So, so far. far, yeah, so far, yeah, yeah. for right now. I mean, God yeah, knows for what right now. gonna bring, yeah. Um, yeah, in terms of meaningful, oh my god, you could make a movie about it, Sweden. That's, that's was it, Sweden, yeah, because every, that that was that was like, I mean, if you were to look out and in, and you know, I've said the story a million times, you know, I win 2019 nationals, you know, I get worlds taken away 2020 COVID, um. I come back 2021. I I have to requalify. I barely get nationals. I barely win at nationals. I okay. I get my card back to. Uh, I get my ticket back to worlds. Uh, that gets taken away from me for like a month. You know, uh, USVI mm. comes in and saves us. Um, you know, kind of uh, takes us in. Uh, I go to worlds and it comes and I you know I go nine for nine and you know like I and then we have to wait for someone to miss. There was a lot that led up to that, you know, for two years. It was for two years that led up to that moment. Um, yeah. I remember, you know, ju- like really quick jumping back to that 2021 uh, Sweden. If you caught, if you were to keep up with it, what I just said, I remember thinking after I pulled that third deadlift, you know, and I was like, I like was crying on the platform, <laughs> like I always, you know, um, that one. I, you know, honestly, that one, that one was also for me because it was just, uh, it had just been so much to get to that point and i was just happy that I, was, I put out a nine you know i put out a good performance and again i walked to the back and i was like okay let, let, what's what's what happens here you know so i you know what i th- think it is sweden and also i remember training you training through covid off of like makeshift squat racks and like you yeah. That's what chairs. makes it like a freaking movie. Chairs, yeah. dude. It was a Rocky movie. It was like when yeah. he was in the in the barn training, but like un, unconventionally. That's what it was. And Gustav Hedlund is as close to Ivan Drago as you're gonna find <laughs> in the '93s, ironically. <laughs> but um, yeah, for sure. 
And Gustav, again, Gustav, a stud performer, yeah. medaled previously, already had medaled in the Open, already a junior world champion. He won the junior worlds out totaling the Open. Mm-hmm. He out totaled the Open as a junior. So when people see, look at his resume, like, oh, he's only won junior worlds before. No, no, no. He's a stud. Yeah. You know, he's a stud, and that's yeah. who you faced. And yeah. I remember when we were in Sweden talking to, like, Joey and Amber, we were yeah, all and, like, and, and in his homeland, you know, like, you in know, his home, that's right, that's right, that's crowd, right. In a home crowd, you know, home crowd for him. Yeah, you yeah, know? yeah, yeah. That's right. And I remember saying, like, this is going to be a fight. This is going to be a good fight. And his final deadlift, right up to the knees, and it yeah. looked like, oh, my God, he might lock it out. And then one leg locked too soon, other one, and then it came out, and it's like, it made it traumatic. It made it, like, it's probably scary as hell for you. But it was like, it's like, oh, my God. But as a viewer for, like, um, the drama show... Yeah, it was probably sweet. Yeah. It's probably sweet because everything that went up to it. And if you had lost, it would have been like heartbreaking because 2019, you're winning Nats, unofficially breaking world records and the number one 93 in the world, but you weren't at Worlds. And then 2020, COVID takes away Worlds. And then 2021, you had to battle Gavin Eden in a tooth and nail fight right down to the last deadlift. Then you get told you're not on. I still remember you posting when you got told USAPL wasn't going. I remember you posting one word. Do you remember what that one word was? Pain. Pain. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I rem- I still remember all these years later reading that and freaking my heart was like, this can't, this cannot, this cannot be the case. Yeah. Two and, worlds uh, taken away, you know, two worlds taken away from me, you know. And, and 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 we know now that you would, you know, these years later still be number one. But I've been around powerlifting long enough to know certain guys and girls will have a year, maybe two years, and that was your pocket. Most people, if you win a world title, amazing. If you win two, you're in very small company to win two world titles. For all I knew when I saw you write pain. I remember having conversations be like, what if this is Keiko's prime in, in 2020, yeah. 2021 and 2019. And yet he, what if he comes and goes and he never wins a fucking world title that could have happened to you. Yeah. I and thought about I read, that a lot. Did you? Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. yeah. Go ahead. Sorry. No, I mean, I mean, I, uh, that's what I was thinking when I, when I seen you write that, in everything else that went on in the background to make this thing happen. And that, because like this had to happen, man, you, you guys had to end up at that world. Yeah. Um, cause there's a lot of people like who were in your shoes that that needed to, that world's needed to happen. And, um, I, that's also, you know what, that's probably why Sweden was so dramatic. And that's why when you broke down at the end, it was a, it was a crazy journey that you went through from, uh, all of that drama you could do a, you could do, do you like at some point you should write a book, but um, you could do a book or movie just on your first world title. And if it ended there, if it ended there, yeah. it'd be like, and it ends, it's, a little, it's still a little Rocky story. Yeah. It still would have been still an amazing through like the COVID through like the, the political drama and all the rest of yeah. all the side stories. It was juicy. And then waiting for you at the end was your Ivan Drago. Like, okay, <laughs> you know what you get to earn? You earned Ivan Drago and all the hype that Gustav had in his homeland. No yeah. less. It was. It's amazing. Yeah. Um, and you know, even um, like during COVID, at the end of 2020, I lost my. You know, we lost my grandma. I, I, I don't know if I mentioned that uh, briefly. That's right. But that was a huge deal for me. Um, that's, you know, mind you, 2021, the entire year of 2021, all three meets I did there, I was injured like really bad, because I like after my uh, after my grandma passed, I remember. It was like two weeks after I got a really bad injury. It's probably because I was so stressed and not um just not resting. You know what I mean? Just not resting. Eating and sleeping. That, yeah, eating, sleeping. And at that time, I was prepping for the February meet to um, kind of have a tune up uh, for the uh, for nationals. So I came into all those meets injured. So that made it. You know that didn't help at all. You know that that made it even worse. Um, so again, I like that. You know when you do think of that story. Just know I was hurt. <laughs> I was also injured yeah. in all those meets, <laughs> you know. So, Greg, yeah. but you you were in a you were in a spot where, like, after everything we just said, you're in a spot where it's, what am I going to pull out? This could be it. This yeah. could be it. Yeah. 
I have to go ninety uh, percent, whatever percent. I gotta go. I gotta see this through because this is looking like it's never gonna. I'm never gonna see this through. It was, um, yeah. I'm so happy that that was that was actually that was a 2021 was a special world though for a lot of people for yeah. a lot of reasons. Yeah, for it, to, it felt uh, different that to way. come back to come back from COVID for a lot of the a lot of the countries, you know. Hmm. Yeah, it so. was something special. I would agree. Then I think. Um, storyline wise and in terms of when you retell a story if someone's like we're going to retell one of Kaiko's battles and you got you got a chameleon of them and they're like well only one because in a movie we, we just want to focus on one I think you're 100% right I think it's like Sweden you got it you got the build up you got the end Sweden but then if it's just sports talk and we're all looking back let, let's say we're we don't know what your rest of your career is going to be, but let's say just up to now, finest performance is 2023. Yeah. That was, that's, that's the first one where everyone's like, by the time deads roll around, they're like, check, please. We'll, we'll go for, we'll go for silver and bronze. Like my man's got that. It's too far out of reach. And that was like, by far your finest little, like your dad probably had no notes or maybe he didn't did have <laughs> notes on this. He probably uh, was like, I, well, I, I, I don't, yeah, yeah. They, I see it. It's like a little beat little bit of papers on the desk. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> you're like, what are those? He's like, we'll go over those tomorrow. <laughs> He's like, then you're like, hey, well, even 24 hours is, is fine. That's good. Um, uh, can I take a restroom yeah. break? Real quick. Yeah, yeah, let's do it. I, I, I want to keep going. 100%. This is yeah, good. for sure. But I'm, I'm going to take a quick restroom break. Sounds good. I will too. Cool, cool. We'll All back. Right. All right, cool. Um, amongst your because you've had several sports rivals over the years and you have had a lot of close calls, etc. Do you think you have one that stands out in your mind now, or is it still tough to say? That's tough to call because they're all, they're all killers in their own, in their own way. Mm. Um, I think, if I if I had to give you one, it'd probably probably be Gustav, just because I know he's punctual as well. <laughs> he's punctual. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's true. I mean, yeah. you've had yeah, you've had so many moments. Yeah. Um, that is a very tough call, actually. I mean, that obviously, you've had... like everyone's good. You know, everyone's really good. So you've had battles with Chance Gavin at Sheffield was amazing and. The uh, USCPL one, um, Frank, man, I don't know. Yeah, it's tough. But Gustav does stand out for a lot of reasons. It'll be interesting. What, what are you thinking about um, Sheffield? Now, Gustav, I believe, comes through due to being second and so close, right? If I'm not mistaken, I have to double check I, it's, I think he does. I believe. I'd be surprised if he didn't. I'm sure he does, though. It's, it's not official yet anyways, but talking about it, if you... Would you like them to bring somebody else? And if they could, do you know who you think you would like them to bring? Or are you f- relatively open? I'm I'm open with it. I mean, at least Gustav, at least bring Gustav because like he deserves it. You know, like he he pulled you know he pulled his third into that silver. So if they want to bring two ninety threes, it'd probably be, probably be him, right? So would it be the same if you went by yourself? Oh, like. I'm the only 93 because that happens to like, to like Delaney. It'd no, be weird. so weird for you. <laughs> Dude, I know. You, I've always, I've always be been like... with someone. <laughs> I know. Yeah. It's so crazy. Although on the flip side, I mean, yeah, I don't know. It, would it, do you think, do you think it would bring out, like you could still reach the same highs even because you don't fully pay attention to your adversaries, but you do know they're there. Yeah. I don't know. Hmm. I don't know. I guess if I, I suppose since there's something, there's still something on the line at Sheffield. I'd still, I, I'd still be a. I'd find someone to, 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 to. I'd find someone to be like, hey, you and me got to fight, you know? Right. Yeah. But it is. You're right though. When we think about Jonathan Keiko, we just don't think about exhibition lifting. That's just not what you do. Yeah. You you're just always in a battle. Yeah. Yeah, Maybe, in terms of yeah, think... in terms of sports, right? It's like it's not just uh, I'm just going out to max out. I'm not just going, you know. 
it's not a backyard mm-hmm. me i just go to max out or whatever right it's like uh, i have to choose we the right numbers have to be put in the you know the the standards have to be there everything so mm. that's what makes the fact that you do what you do so so much more impressive as well that the right numbers have to put in etc the one thing i'll give like the reason why it worked for um for instance delaney his when he was solo he had a backstory where he's like chasing he's chasing something he's chasing russell or he's world record and this is his shot he's the reigning world champion who's at to prove something to everybody i keep hearing russell or his name well i if i take his world record i don't got to worry about this is my shot of solidifying myself etc right. and so there's like a storyline there and you you would cheer him on like all right man do your thing um and he came obviously within an inch of getting it on that lockout uh, of the final deadlift but with yourself it's your world record so it's different if it's like by yourself, watch me break my own world record. Right. It's still going to be cool, but I think people would prefer to see you battling somebody else. It's yeah, different I think if it's it, your own world record. Yeah, for for in terms of like entertainment, um, I would say just consecutively, it's been uh, for the most part, it's been the ninety threes. The for in, in, in with entertainment in in mind, you know, not just like powerlifting, but um, sports entertainment, like how close things are like, Hey, this guy goes, he's ahead. This guy goes now he's ahead, you know? Mm. So, yeah. And, and I do like the fact that you guys all have different personalities. Like, yeah. Uh, yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Like we're we, all, we're we all have, our own self. Yeah. Yeah. Which makes it a nice spread. Yeah, for sure. Um, you guys, you got guys like Gavin Aiden who puts on a show, got guys like Gustav Hedlund, who's like straight up, you know, he goes to bed by like 930. I don't <laughs> I, I don't know if it's straight up 930, but it's early. I talk to him. He's so regimented and disciplined and like um, like you talk to him for a little while. You feel lazy. You feel like you're race chaotic <laughs> and you're doing and you're doing fine. It's just that he is that regimented. And you know what I mean? That's why he gets so much out of himself. Um, but yeah, it's a it is a good spread on people. Next year, we're probably going to have more people. Um like a 99% sure Brendan Petrie's coming over mm. your world's performance. It was totally just coincidence, but you ended up actually nudging passes total as well, which is, but it's uh, I didn't, I, yeah, it. I didn't know that until like the next day, someone told me, I was like, it oh. was me who told you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> oh okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I told yeah. you. And even though the thing is though, um, it's total coincidence, obviously, but, uh, it is, and it was at the world championship. So it's you. You don't necessarily can't compare. You can't compare totals. We've done this a yeah. million times and said this a million times over. However, um, it is good on your end to have to have the highest total coming out of the world championships. At least ninety three kilo down. He gave you your flowers in his story, saying, um, "If anyone's listened to the Jonathan Keiko, the the." previous podcast you alluded to earlier he's like if you've listened to that podcast and you know jonathan keiko's background story you know like he, he's giving you your flowers on on your your win anyways did you see that story i want to say i did yes yeah i'm it, pretty it, sure it'd be diff- yeah you might it's it, the thing is it was within it was immediately after you won and it's gone in 24 hours the story is and your 24 hours would have been crazy yeah, your yeah. 24 hours wouldn't have been check it out yeah, everything. That, was, that 20... was wild yeah right but he's essentially giving you your flower saying like you, you everything you've done and talking about the previous podcast you've he's actually bigged up your the podcast but actually he dropped the link to the previous podcast as well saying check it out listen to it and um yeah hats off to you anyways and then he essentially announced a couple days later or the next day or whatever he wants to join the party. And I think a lot, even Russ watched um, the worlds and is like, I got to come, you know? Yeah. And, and yeah. a lot of people are watching now and are like, Holy smokes. I Russ said straight up. I want to be with the world's best lifters on the world's biggest stage. And I got to come And a lot. I think perk, a lot of these guys are going to be coming over uh, next year. I don't know. Do you know? Because Russ is a flex guy. Obviously Petrie is going to be 93. I is Russ still going 93? What do you know what all this looks like no, on your end? Have you heard? I don't think like I don't know, but I I don't see Russ wanting to do 93. Like if he if really? he that, yeah, I don't like I don't see I don't see why he'd want to do that. Not fill it out. 
But if he came in as like a small 93, so we're talking like 90 something. No, no, no. And, he, um, like, I'm pretty sure he would just cut to 83. Like uh, how yeah, he normally maybe. does. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. he was like tinkering with the idea of moving up to 90. But I don't, I don't know. know. I like I don't I don't know for sure, but like from what I how I know Russ from you know just like interacting with him and kind of just chatting with Joey here and there, I don't think he would. But I think he just I think he would want to be an eighty three because I think he I think that's his more natural like um, body weight, Walking you know, around weight. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because yeah. he he would be. You guys are big, and you guys some of you guys like cut to 93 like yeah. Gustav is I don't know how the hell Gustav makes 93 he's huge he's not, right <laughs> he's huge I have yeah. no idea and he's he's like I don't know how tall he is but he's not he's relatively tall I want to like, say he's 510 maybe five a little bit maybe, maybe even six maybe but... 511 to, yeah. I think he might be 511 range yeah um and and if people think like he's slender like he's no he's ripped, not but he is yeah, he's jacked, jacked. <laughs> he is jacked jacked like his him with his shirt off is impossibly jacked. <laughs> um, so yeah. And I think if Russ came over as a 93, his total he did 885 in uh South Korea. Mm. IPF world standards is gonna be nuts. Different. Out, but he could adjust. Yeah. He's been he's been to worlds before, so he can adjust. But um his totals, his total would be competitive. It's just, you know, it's gonna be a whole nother like like he'll he's that pile of contenders. If he goes ninety three, oh that my god! That would be god, wild. Jonathan. Imagine, right? Jonathan, just, why, why, why watch anything? Why watch any other? <laughs> you won't. Oh, I, I just need one session. I just yeah. need one session. Like, like it would be if you have. It, it, well, here's the only problem: there'll be a bottleneck at at US at the US Nationals because all, all those guys can't go through America. Yeah. Only two of you. Um. So first off, US Nationals would have. Gavin, Bryce Lewis, yourself, Petrie, and Russ. Unless there's, I, I don't even know, maybe not yourself because you're doing the Sheffield, Sheffield yeah. event. So, yeah, hopefully I don't, I don't have to do nationals because those are like a month apart, I think, only. It would be, which it would, would be, be really dumb. Yeah. Be real, it would be tough. I don't think it's been finalized yet, but I'd very much so like to just have to do Sheffield and not. Do a meet again in three weeks, you know. <laughs> it, the toughest would be, um, obviously, if you do Sheffield, you post up a total, and you know those fellas know exactly a total they have to beat, and you, it's kind of like you finish first, and they just go for your total. Yeah, that, yeah. It'd be weird seeing you not lose head up, but you don't go to Worlds. That'd be weird. Yeah, were, that'd be weird when you yeah. were you. When you were you, like you yeah. have been the number one ninety three forever, yeah. and if you don't go to worlds, you're like, oh my god, this is this is a weird setup. Yeah. And, so, and this and this next worlds is what's going to qualify people for world games as for well. world games, yeah, for uh, in China. So that is something I really want to do. You know, dude, if anybody deserves it, you know, you're you're accumulating a lot of memories, man. You got yeah all these worlds. You got chef two Sheffield events now by the time this all rolls around. If you get world games under your hat, holy freaking smokes. And I believe at Worlds, I believe they take the top three in the weight class. Oh it's yeah. The podium. Oh. I think the podium goes. Oh, cool. I didn't know. I was like... <laughs> yeah. I th I'm pretty sure on I'm not hundred percent on that, but I'm pretty sure they take the podium. Um, and that's a healthy like those are all yeah. Kind of, yeah. I don't even know what the podium of ninety threes is gonna be with the type of killers i just mentioned i don't even know i yeah. had no idea but this this your weight class is i have a it's hard fun. time yeah it's fine it's, it's fun. fun we have the most we have the most amount of we have the deepest talent pools why um because we just have so many i think being a 93 is just your average like weight and kind of size for for average adult uh, across the world so mm. uh, average adult male for across the world so um that's why we ended up with so much in our in our talent pool it's just because there's just a lot of us because i uh, we had the biggest weight class going into this world so we had 50 93s is um, that right uh-huh so and that was the the most amount of heads for um for any of the weight classes um and we could 50 50 93s we could be our own meat 
You know? Yeah, you're right. You know? right. Yeah. <laughs> and, and listen, your own meat in its world. It's people from all over the world. Yeah, yeah. So that's, in, that's pretty, that's funny that you said it like that, but it's true. Yeah. And, um, yeah, I think the average man walking around is around like 180 something. And then when he starts lifting weights, he moves into 205. Mm-hmm. Like the average man who lifts weights probably does end up around 205. Around two, yeah, around 200 to 205, maybe a little more depending on their size, their height. Yeah. Do you get, um, how are you in terms of battle fatigue from, does this help that this wasn't as much of a battle, but of course you didn't know that leading into it was all the hype and stuff. No, but you the, get battle fatigue or. Uh, most definitely. I would say I do. Um, but, um, again, like how I've shifted my mentality. Um, I, I I'm going to jump back. I, I just spoke to Joey about this. It was on a little podcast I did with him and Kelly. Um, of how after 2022 worlds uh something i reflected on and something i almost made like an executive decision for myself was i knew something had to change my lifting's good my technique's good uh, all those variables are good all those variables are good my you know my outside life my you know just stressors whatever right but i knew something within me had to change because i knew it wouldn't be sustainable and especially if it could lead to something an outcome where a mistake like that can happen you know maybe mm-hmm. if i was in a better mindset perhaps if i was more aware you know at in 2022 mm-hmm. worlds maybe i could have changed that number myself you know offered input and be like excuse me fellas. exactly exactly <laughs> yeah 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 you know uh, so i knew something had to change uh and if anything you know the, the only thing the one thing you have complete control over is 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 how you handle things as yourself, right? So I knew coming out of that world, I had to change my, um, I, I don't want to say change, but calibrate my mindset and just my mentality and just how I, um, my outlook on life, my how I perceive things and how I handle things. Um, so um, that's why I take the uh, 2022 worlds as almost a blessing in disguise for me, just how I how I took it on the chin. Um uh, my friend was joking how it was my canon event. I don't know if you know what that means. <laughs> Tell it to me. No, I, I don't uh, think I did. so. <laughs> so in um the newest Spider-Man movie, <laughs> um basically a canon event means like <laughs> something bad, like something bad has this bad thing has to happen for the character growth of this of this uh, like in this instance of like every Spider-Man has a canon event that where someone like dies or something uh like really bad happens but it has to happen for them to mm. grow as a uh, grow right um so my friend was joking to me about that i thought it was funny but um um i don't know if you've seen Isn't, the memes like he's f- with you is it with you no people well there's the, the main <laughs> the main antagonist of the movie is like one of the spider-men and they they say I look like him, which is funny to me. But that dude's that dude's cool though, so I, I'm I'm cool with it. <laughs> Dude, I gotta see that new Spider Man movie. It's supposed yeah. to be amazing. It's great. It was uh, it was really good. Yeah. So check it. Out. Uh, uh, t- to be honest, that you really do need a canon event. Otherwise, it becomes just if someone's just always winning, it there's it gets a little stagnant. The, if mm. someone finally loses, comebacks, and then wins, like you, Penna. Um, yeah. those stories are phenomenal. And yeah. uh you know what you've avoided is if you win too much, people start rooting against you because they get sick of the same guy winning. That happens in every sport, by the way. Yeah. Um, that hasn't happened to you. At least not I'm sure there's pockets, small yeah, pockets. Yeah, they're yeah, the but in general, for the majority, in general yeah. Sense. Yeah. Um you know, I'd like to think that comes a lot from just my personality. Um, I'm just kind of, I, I I was talking to someone about this and, you know, there's a huge compliment that I've had, uh, that I've been, that I've gotten before and I'm getting a lot now is just, uh, I'm kind of, they compare me to like Pacquiao since I'm Filipino, you know, they compare oh, me Manny as like, Pacquiao? yeah, yeah. They compare me to, they're like, oh, he, you're the, you, you've basically become the Manny Pacquiao of uh, powerlifting of the IPF, you know? Um, and I think in general, he was well received just because he was just, you know, he never, uh, you know, I grew up watching his fights and I always was like, I like how he kind of uh, presented himself. You know, he just, um, 
he was always friendly. He was always, uh, um, you could tell he had a good heart, you know, and he was mm. never like trash talking people. And that was something I, I always, um, kind of pulled from, uh, you know, I was like, if I'm ever in a sport, I'd like to be like that, you know? Um, and I think that's just kind of like the Filipino culture as well. We're, uh, we're just always kind of nice for no reason. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I think that respectful. helps as well. Yeah. I think that kind of helps too. So, uh, it's difficult. Uh, I don't know anybody who's going to get much traction hating on Jonathan Keiko online. People would be like, <laughs> what the fuck are you talking about <laughs> like you you wouldn't you i don't think you would need to stand up for yourself i think most people would would jump in and like even all your sports rivals like all are like 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 yeah they want to win they want to beat you in competition but they all have nothing bad to say about you like mm-hmm. they're all like yeah he's a good guy what am i gonna say you know what i mean but there is like a way that you carry yourself like that but it feels authentic as well mm-hmm. it doesn't feel like you're like through gritted teeth have yeah. to you know put on that persona it's more it probably helps that when you show up to these competitions you have that relaxed it's kind of the way you carry yourself you detach a little bit you don't see things certain ways and when the competition's done you know it's done and it also helps that you're you're winning a lot so <laughs> yeah that, that also helps yeah so <laughs> that helps with the way you carry yourself but uh yeah it is something that you've avoided that um but you know, if you uh, do, you think moving forward, do you picture moving forward? Like, what do you think the future of the 93s looks like? It's just going to get steeper and steeper and tougher and tougher. And if I were to ever say something a little that kind of strokes my own ego in that sense, it's just like, uh, I've always had this since I was a kid. It's just if there's someone that can do it, it might as well be me. And I feel like I've said that on the podcast before. Um, I don't know where that comes from. Um, they, I don't know if that's someone else, they, you know, that was influenced on me by like my like my dad or like uh, even my even my grandma was competitive, <laughs> you know. And um, so, you know, it, uh, I look forward to that when when more and more people come. That's it's just it's just fun. Uh, I I think. Um, Someone posted one of my old quotes. Uh, I said this in 2019. Um, I'll try and say what I said. It was, I like to set the standard. It's nice to set the standard higher. I said this in 2019 uh, in an SBD video. I like to set the standard higher because it makes me stronger, which in turn makes my competition stronger. And because my competition gets stronger, that means I can get stronger. Um, So... When I say that, that means something like the barbell sport, you know, and like whatever weight class and, and you know, male and female, um, it is an all inclusive thing, right? You know, you should never bar someone from wanting to do this sport. Uh, that, that for a lot of people is extremely empowering, right? So if someone can come in and wants to, you know, go against me or whoever, you know, anyone in the weight classes, then, then feel free to do it. That's awesome. I love it. That makes me very happy, you know? And I'm, for me, I'm just, I, I would just love, I just love fighting. Like I enjoy it so much. I enjoy the, I enjoy just competing so much um, at the end of the day. So for me, it's just, it's just, it, be, it becomes more exciting the more people uh, that are there. So it's actually, it's actually a possibility for fresh faces as well. Fresh showdowns. Cause you've, mm-hmm. You've dealt with these other gentlemen several times. You're going to probably deal with Gustav again. And I mean, uh, conceivably, you know, a lot of these gentlemen again. So it is also another storyline, another fresh face. Okay. Let's, let's, let's have some more. Let's have some, let's have some new battles. Let's see what the, what does this chapter look like? Mm-hmm. Essentially. Yeah. It's, and I think that's cool. You know, I always like to think of it as fire, you know, like in the boxing world, like you got, like with Pacquiao, he had his like he had his trilogies. You know, any any sport they have their trilogies, they have their their rematches or whatever. And then it's cool. It's like, well, let's move on from that. You know, and then okay, now he's fighting this guy, or you know, and this is why mm. this guy will be him, or you know, like it's not like the other guy, or you know. So that's what makes th- that's what makes things uh, compelling, and it keeps the excitement going for the for the audience uh, to continue like supporting. You know the sport in general, not just like the individual lifters, but to uh, 
for the I think it's it's good for the sport as long as new people are as long as there's always um, people coming in and and pushing the sport further. That's what um yeah I think the like hopefully because Brendan said he's coming over before and then not so hopefully he's a hundred percent in but I do agree one hundred percent that you don't want the same over and over and over. Mm-hmm. And your win, this world was very, put a bow in that one, fellas. Like I, you know, you've leveled up and uh, people are now, vi- they vied for silver bronze. Doesn't mean next time they're not, Gustav, sure. I'm sure would listen to this and be like, hey, next time I'm going to level up as well. And and I don't doubt anyone, any of those gentlemen over there. I'm not saying that for sure. But there is a nice, um, for as a sports fan, you do appreciate a new, let's, let's see something a little bit new. Let's, yeah. let's see, let's see another matchup, another wave of people to come. And we're talking obviously uh, because Brennan in U S but around the world, there's probably some other 93s who are starting to age out of juniors and coming into the open or who are going to start emerging as well. It only takes a little bit of time before someone mm-hmm. else comes and another wave comes. And um, we've seen other champions and other sports who have dealt with several waves and um and that's when legacies start getting built and right. things start getting interesting and again it is super duper tight it's it's always a tight battle yeah. with you wouldn't like though sometimes i think about it wouldn't it be cool when it's all said and done for me at least like every every me i did from here on to when i'm done is like close battles close battles you know it's just like exciting and you know that that would be great that'd be cool with me you know so it'll be like looking at it looking at all your opposition it sure as heck looks like it all your totals all your totals are like a lot of these guys are are all in the same totals you know you're all within like kilos of each other um i know yeah it looks like this is the way it's going to be. And it could be like, you may not be win, 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 win. It might be like a, like a moment in South Africa. You come back, regain the title. Who knows how many canon moments and whatever the heck <laughs> is going to happen if you end up. How long do you see yourself lifting and competing? At the highest level? Um, Good question. Yeah. Do you At the highest level? Because after, after you decided you're. Yeah. Well, let me reword this question. At the highest level, and then when you think you're done at the highest level, do you still compete for fun in other variations? Realistically, I think highest level, another five to seven years, or six to eight around there, depending on how well I can, uh, how well I can maintain my body. Um, because I I know, I know now for certain, my my mind will out will beat my body. So it's really until my body just cannot cannot keep up though. So I would say six to eight years if I if I'm on point, extremely on point. Yeah. And that's like at the tip top level. Like tip tip top level. Not just like top ten, like tip tip top, you know? Yeah. Like yeah. you're vying for the overall gold. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And and after that, do you see yourself what do you think? Do you, do you stick around in, in like like Lane Norton, who's in the Masters now, right? And um, do you stick around and keep, in, or, or do, are you like, nah, I don't know. I don't. I can't answer that now because I don't know how I'll feel once I get there. And I, I'm thinking about like even if I said now, I'm like nah, I'll just do what like I'll just go bench only 105s. You know, <laughs> like I don't have to cut. You right? you one hundred percent could yeah that, yeah <laughs> you'd be a champ too you're right dude you could open up another chapter and still stay in the open or you could do yeah. both you could do you could legit like let's say you end up in the masters you could legitimately be on the open worlds team for bench and three lift for masters because you want to do let me tell you as a guy who is in his forties you still need to do stuff yeah. like you especially you are a type of guy. You're never going to be at a point in your life. You always think, when I'm older, I won't care. I'll just wake up and do whatever. That day doesn't come. You don't just wake up content to do nothing when you're guys right. who do stuff. You always need to do something. You need something. What am I striving for? What passion do I have? What is That doesn't just go. The yeah. need to have that. Um, 
So you'll need something. What that looks like, maybe it's not powerlifting related. I don't know. Yeah. But something will be around. <clears throat> maybe I can start streaming. Uh, I, I might get back into gaming, honestly, because like I watch a lot of the game, like a lot of guys who play nowadays, and I'm like, these guys, these guys suck. <laughs> oh yeah, damn! Yeah. yeah. And is that like that's where I'll? I feel like I would excel. Like once if I get back, if I got back into gaming, like I, I could probably play pro right now. Like if I put if I had the hours to do it, yeah. So it takes yeah. hours, right? Like it takes. Oh, it, ta- like... it takes. It takes. It takes just as much practice as anything else. Yeah. Re- yeah. 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 Like you were telling me before. Like, I mean, we've done so many podcasts over the years, but um, I think maybe your first one, you were talking about. You were so deep into gaming. You were deep, deep. You yeah. were like crazy hours a day deep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that's, that's what all, it yeah. takes. Yeah, yeah, that's what it takes. It really does. And uh, now I just allocate that time to powerlifting. So nothing's changed in how much uh, time allocation I do. It's just now it's just shifted to to powerlifting. <laughs> Was gaming even maybe even longer sessions? Oh yeah, oh yeah, hundred percent. Like gaming, crazy. Yeah, people, yeah, gaming's people don't gaming. know tough. And, yeah, and it's huge too. It's yeah. absolutely massive. Like like we know. If you're top end gaming and you got a YouTube channel, you're a, a bit a millionaire. Yeah, you you six figures, easy, yeah, or more, yeah, millionaire. So like, I have friends that I used to play with. They're like in mansions now, like I mentioned once, you know, and they all, oh, man. you know, and they're just like. Sometimes they'll, you know, I'll I'll, I'll have chats and they're like, "You sure you didn't want to keep doing that?" I'm like, this. I don't know if I've ever said this on the podcast, but I'll just say it right now. Um, when I do talk to old friends who are uh, in esports, or you maybe used to be in esports, or they do, they definitely know that world, right? Um, mm-hmm. They'll be like, "Why did you go? Why did you go to the powerlifting? Right? Why did you start lifting?" And the one thing I told the the bottom line, I suppose, is I say I chose my own happiness over over that. I chose my own happiness here, going into lifting. Um, so I always try and remember that because gaming became so strenuous for me especially i was young at the time when i did it um i i, I don't i guess i you know I, I didn't i don't handle myself as well as i do now uh, compared mm. to like 10 years 10 years ago you know um so i stepped away from my for myself um and i try to like i said i try to remember that every time i go to these competitions and i go to whenever i train or you know you know uh, and i try i try and stay conscious of that like, hey, I like, chose like, to do this. I chose to do this, this for my happiness. Good. What was the strenuousness? Uh, like, like uh, because I, I'm I'm not in that world. Some people mm-hmm. listening might not be, but it is. Is it just like all encompassing? And if you if you don't do good or whatever, you're, yeah. It's if just, you don't do good, you're out. You know, I guess that's with anything. But like, it's just so. It's such a competitive field, especially nowadays. Um, you know, like this, the like to get into powerlifting, you like to get into the top level, you need years of like building your body. You know, you can't just do mm-hmm. this overnight. Um, there are just, and then for like gaming, there are just some kids out there that they're just naturally like insane. Like, yeah, they play a lot, but like they're just naturally talented for this. You know, there was never a, a, a like a barrier for entry, I suppose, you know, in that sense. Mm. Uh, so, it's extremely competitive. That's like overnight, some kid could just appear and he's just the best in the world, you know? Right. So, um, so the stre- you know, the strenuous part is just how, for me at least, uh, I think because I am a bigger person, I can't, s- it's hard for me to like stay still and sit for a long time. Um, I was just talking to Nina about this, how, um, like, again, I'm bringing up my dad. My dad, my dad's big. He's huge for a Filipino guy. My dad, uh, my you know, he's gone a little shorter now. But I think at his peak, my dad was six one. Oh, okay. Yeah. He's a big dude. Yeah. He's big. He's big, and he's like, uh, he's he's wide. I this is where I got my width. He's like wide like me. Or I'm wide like yeah, him rather. Yeah, yeah he's, big, he's big. Right. I'm the. I think I'm short because of, because I was premature. Because my older brother uh, was like is like five eleven. Oh. So okay. I'm the yeah I'm the short one. Um, and my sister, she's even like five six. Yeah, that's tall for a Filipino girl. Yeah, that's very tall. Because normally, the, I think uh, the average Filipino girl is maybe like five foot, five one. You know, um, 
so my family we're big you know Mm -hmm. um so um for me again so for me to like sit a long time was hard and for me I, i always enjoyed being physically active like i did a lot of sports growing up so sitting for me i didn't like it like even though i was good at the games i never felt good to be not physically active you know you had to be stuck there in front of a exactly. screen for that many hours exactly. over and over, and over. yeah it, i mean it's, it's the opposite of what you do now like you're exactly. a freaking top end athlete i yeah. th- here's the thing your athletic physical prime is only going to be for all athletes whatever however long but your gaming could That's be long. yeah that could be forever right. <laughs> yeah i think you i think you played it right yeah. i think you you got out and like look, look what you've done well, the experience sheffield was and with yeah. the next sheffield which is going to be another level up it's going to be insane their yeah. ideas for the next sheffield is bonkers and um it's another level up it's sheffield 2.0 so listen to all the experiences you've, you've had you get all that and then like you said, if in that time period, five, seven, six, eight years, whatever it is, then you end up returning at some point. You could return with a peace of mind knowing I freaking lived the life that like I've had so many crazy. I went, I toured the world. The media this year, we're talking media this year, millions of people watching you on yeah. Eurosport. By the time you leave, the type of media you will have done and the amount of people, it's going to be crazy. And then you might be like, okay, done it all seen it all maybe you get into gaming the only thing that'll be tough is if your gains start whittling away and you're like damn it i used to be one of the strongest men in the world i've learned that that day will come and i will have to accept it and uh you know so well here's the thing here's the thing like that quote is you you, like yes you you, all of us age but it's one of those do not go silently into that night moment. Yeah. Like, yeah. like look at David, look at David Ricks. He's yeah. in his sixties. He's a 93 in his sixties. <laughs> and he was like 60 years old. And Jesse Norris of all people yeah. got the scare of his life. But your, your boy, uh, Joey flex was handling. Yep, Jesse I remember that. that meet. I was watching that. meet. Okay. I remember. Yeah. Gotcha. 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 Yeah. So, I mean, it's one of those where you're 100% right. You're going to get weaker, et cetera. Age will catch up to you. But it could be it could be quick, or it could be slow, and you go you don't go all that. Who fly. knows? Maybe I'll just be Dave Ricks and I'll go open until I'm sixty. See, this is it, dude. <laughs> For all you know, you could be in your sixties and be like, "God damn, Keiko, retire! You know, stop, <laughs> stop coming around." You're like, "Nah, nah no, no, I'm no, not today, <laughs> not, not today. today. <laughs> I might not win, but I might not lose either. I don't know. We don't know this year. I don't know. You just scare the shit out of people sometimes." Um, who knows, man? But it would be pretty cool if you end up being a superstar in gaming as well. And and you could if you just had enough lifting to be muscular, feel good, whatever the shit. Right. But you don't have to be a competitive bodybuilder or power lifter, sorry. But who knows what you could do in gaming? It, it could be another chapter of your life that's freaking yeah. you fly I, I, all over the I world think about and that become too. famous as well. Yeah, I think about that too. I'm like, I know I can do that. I just need the time. So whenever, you know. So there's only so much time in my in in a day in a week in a, in a month, uh, so who knows? Uh, I, that's definitely a possibility. It's something I I haven't um, written off yet. I suppose it's something I haven't pushed aside. Like, how good do you think you? How good were you, and how good do you think you can get for gaming? Yeah, like how? Like good if I had you? time, if I had time, and I just like and I didn't have to train a lot, I could be I could be on a pro team right now. Because I watch them play, I still watch like like for example like COD. Like COD is the to get it to be a pro in COD, it's not too bad anymore. So that's uh, in my opinion, at least it's not. So it's pretty easy. Um, like I could probably do that right now, like while I'm powerlifting. <laughs> Pete, really? Yeah, yeah. Dude, Pete, Pete goes on about World of Warcraft. Would you just walk in there and start kicking people over? No, that's or different. That... That's a different. That's that's a whole different type of a uh, game. Is uh, it what, okay? Yeah, for me, I, I'm more so like a aimer in a shooting, like a FPS style games. Okay, okay, like, okay. When, like we're talking like um, Fortnite, uh, Overwatch, Valorant, CS:GO uh, type of games. So, and what's World of Warcraft? World of Warcraft is more of like an MMO. Uh, that's kind of where you you make a character, you you uh, kind of walk around the world, and you just uh, progress a character. Uh, it's something I actually compare to powerlifting a lot. 
Uh, so those are called MMORPGs, right? Mm. <laughs> um, and I, I just say powerlifting is like the real life uh, MMORPG. Like I am my character, and like I'm just progressing my character that happens to be in real life. Dude, that's, that's what I compare it to. Of, I compare it that's to actually, thing, yeah. That's actually a pretty cool comparison. I actually yeah. was trying to find a way to make fun of Pete being a nerd for choosing World of Warcraft as opposed to a shoot 'em up, but it actually sounds pretty cool. Yeah, and I'm it's the same thing. Begrudgingly admit that, but yeah. yeah, it's the same. It's the same thing as like um like in the game. You have to you know you go train at a proper place. You need the proper equipment. You need the proper whatever really? it's the same thing yeah i i need my proper equipment i need my i need to sleep i need my food uh for my character to be good me you know it's yeah, it's pretty yeah, much the yeah. same thing so uh, for me i get that uh that because i like i love mmos I, I you know like i'll grind and bleed on mmos like uh, people are playing diablo 4 right now for example um and for me like i get that grind from powerlifting like I don't have to play Diablo because I'm playing powerlifting essentially. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So. No kidding, man. We'll yeah. see what those chapters end up. Yeah, we'll see, like, dude. <laughs> if you blow, if you blow up, promise me you'll come back on King of the Lifts. If you end up like making a million dollars, being yeah. super famous, whatever, come back and let's just relive some war stories or whatever. Yeah. On, Remember know, when I used to lift? Lift. <laughs> That's right. That's right. And, and we'll, we'll shoot the shit. Listen, dude, I appreciate you coming on. Um, we did over two hours. Freaking, it's an easy conversation yeah. every time you come on, my friend. Yeah, um, we could we could have gone another another two hours easily, I bet. Just talking oh, about hell it. Hell yeah. yeah. We didn't even but we didn't we even know. dive deep in the world. <laughs> we just talked about it a little bit. I know, but I mean, sometimes <laughs> you do, sometimes you don't. You know what I mean? Yeah. But um, I mean, obviously, we're gonna do more podcasts though. Oh, uh, yeah. that's for sure. And uh, and what's next? Is it Sheffield? It's yeah, Sheffield. Mm-hmm. So thirty weeks. Okay. Thirty weeks. Thirty. Oh, weeks can I can day. I can I uh, say something about that? It was interesting. 100. I I saw a video of mine that was about thirty weeks ago, and it gave me that perspective of how long 30 weeks is like mm. you say you're like oh yeah i'm 30 weeks out you don't really like think about it right like i know it's in february but so far right so i saw a video that i posted 30 weeks ago and i remember how long ago that felt like i remember that day you know and i was like oh wow that's 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 a long time ago <laughs> you know like that's yeah. the time from now to sheffield so i was like huh okay that gives me a good a good uh game plan to uh to, to uh plan out Dude, you know how much life can happen in 30 weeks? Yeah, a lot can happen in 30 weeks. Yeah. A lot can happen in 30 weeks, my friend. Yeah. Um, let's see what happens. But you deserve a nice little time off of of some battles. You can work on things and um, you know, deload, let any kind of negative yeah, I'm actually, pass um, if you want. We're going to um Nashville in uh two weeks. We're visiting Nina's family. Oh, nice. I mean, I, nice. I haven't seen them since uh, 2021. So you know what? Doubling back to the very first question you asked me, if you ever get an opportunity to go to France and um, for any, I mean, I know they hold meets not to compete, but just show up or like, because they, they, they bring in international lifters for off. But um, if you were ever in France and you want to link up with those people, they would absolutely like, they are powerlifting crazy in France right now. First off, mm-hmm. they love, they love powerlifting. And they will go nuts if you showed up 100%. Um, ever have an opportunity that arises, you should think about it. Yeah, I'll and keep Penn that in holding, mind. Yeah. yeah, Penn is holding these money meets and he's flying people in. And uh, Wait, he's running these meets, yeah, yeah. What the so hell? He, <laughs> yeah, yeah, and he competes in them. So it's not just him, he's a team. So his fiance, Anissa, um, Leah Bavois, Turbo Tiff, Penna. All of those silent worker people, Coco, all come together. They run the meets. They freaking um, compete in the meets. They're refs. They're freaking meet directors. They're part of the federations. It's crazy what they're doing in France. And I'm telling you, Jonathan, it was like the, the same crowd of worlds packed, standing room only. They hoot and holler. They freaking, when Penna was done, he showed up because it was a two-day meet. He showed up the next day. He was day one, prime time. And they had like five hours of pictures with him. Like he's That's a crazy. freaking, like he's a, like he's a movie star. Five hours. He, he just, the, there was a queue and it's insane how big powerlifting is and how big they, those lifters are in, in over there. And when they did, um, 
their live stream, it was like, this was just like a local meet. They weren't, it was a local money meet, but they weren't like, they. it was two weeks after Worlds. So it's not, you know, and they still got like, I think it was like 12,000 views in a day. Yeah. And um, which is like rivaling USAPL numbers or beating USAPL numbers. And there, it's just, it's not even like they're like showdown, so to speak. It's they love powerlifting over there. It is absolutely freaking nuts. So if you do have an opportunity, something pops up, um, you should think about it. But your schedule is already absolutely insane for actually lifting. So maybe yeah. more as a tourist swimming yeah. by and saying hi and spending the diet time and whatever training with everyone over there, and they will go nuts. But if you ever showed up at a competition, they'll they'll freaking go crazy when they see you because they just love it, man. Yeah, <laughs> they love that's it crazy. There. That's crazy. They built something. Dude, they built yeah. something special. Yeah, that's good. But um, but anyways, buddy, thank you for coming on the podcast. As per usual, we'll talk in the DMs. Um, we'll do another podcast before Sheffield rolls around, I'm sure, and, and yada yada. And everybody listening, um, uh, please do subscribe, give us high ratings when you do. And until next time, six pack lap it at six up, and we are out. All right.